The more we get together, the happier we'll be! Welcome in to Bad Movies Rule, the worst movie podcast ever Ever. recorded. We got the Reverend Charles Hewitt in the house. We got the dirt farmer Clint Bush. And... The golden one herself. Golden one. Well, I like it. That was good. Grace Hauser is back. We're glad Grace is here. Yes, we are. We like the golden one. A little extra sunshine on our day. Sunshine. That's right. I don't know. I'm walking on sunshine. Hey, hey, hey. I thought you didn't want to do karaoke later. Oh, sorry. I got you got me all excited, and I I had to sing. Grace, back for the first time since Ernest Scared Stupid. Oh, that's so, a good movie. Welcome yeah, back. Yeah, it's not, though. That's is a it, good movie. Thank it's, you. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, we're glad. Don't be it. afraid to get right in there. Get in there. Okay. It's Thank okay you. to really talk about this. You want to hear me chew my Skittles? No. In fact, I hope that's the last one <laughs> that you're going to eat. Dude, the time for eating Skittles has passed. The time has come the to talk about- come. The wrong guys. The wrong guys. I thought I kept thinking this was <laughs> the, the wrong other guys. Movie. The, oh, if it was the other guys, it'd be so much better. The other guys. It's confusing. There's the other guys. There's the right stuff. I kept thinking about that movie. The right stuff is nowhere near. That is a spectacular film about uh, the space and but it's yes. about aerospace a bunch of and Chuck Yeager and it's about a bunch of guys. That's and, it. I'm off this show. <laughs> if you think right stuff is anywhere in the category of wrong Red guys, Charles. over. It's this. It's just a bunch of guys in silly suits walking in a room. That's it's what, pretty that's much what the same thing. That is right stuff too. Actually, come That's to think of it, they so change their suits occasionally. They, they do, and it's they're and some uh, of them burn up to death. Slightly more capable, yeah, than than this one. Well, yeah. I don't know; those guys were kind of horn dogs too. No land them, speed records them, were sent. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> or airspeed air records. Speed records. Whatever. What did I say? Land Wasn't speed. he on the one? The the no. What's the one with the rocket car on the ground? That was just G oh, testing. The, yeah. the greatest yeah. Indian, the world's what, greatest uh, Indian. All right, let's dive straight into the vitals for the wrong guys. The movie came out in 1988. <laughs> it was directed by. Da, 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 da. Danny Bilson, your favorite he's, director. He's done guy. a lot of stuff. He has. He's done all the things. Tell, tell me the things he's done. Well, he did the Trancers series, Trancers 1 through Trancers. 5. We're going to be doing that whole thing <laughs> yes, soon. Yeah, we are. We just looked through the list the other day. The Trancers. Eliminators, which is another one on the list. The Eliminators? So he, it's a bunch of... They go to the bathroom there, a There's not seven of those. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The Bowel Evacuators the bowel is another evacuator. movie that he did. Hey, you want to get that? Sorry, it was. It's this, hey, it's hey your phone. What is oh, happening Jennifer, to start off? Do you, you want to get your ad. phone? Is that important? I don't know why that's making noise. It right. says no noise making. It's all good. All right, so I'll, I'll just do that part over again. I don't know how that happened. How do I get rid of it? The bowel evacuators. He's he's oh. been. It, it's basically been a bunch of B movies, and then out of nowhere in the early '90s, he made The Rocketeer. Right. Oh, okay, Rocketeer. Which is like I like The Rocketeer. A legit movie. Yeah, that that's legit. good. And ish. It, good ish. Sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. Not a legendary. You enjoy movie, it, but right? not fantabulous. It had uh, James Bond in it as a bad guy. That's true. That's true. Uh, movie was also written by Danny Bilson and his uh, writing partner Paul DeMeo, who also has all the same credits. They've written pretty much everything they've done together. Oh. Movie starred. Maybe a they should split up. Line. <laughs> maybe he should hold the mayo. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> hey. hey. Yeah, maybe they were. Yeah. The red button counts the puns, Grace, oh, over there. Yeah. And that's, a, a pun. that's a stressful spot, Grace. You've got to keep the pun Just counter. The, it go. is on one. I can see it. I'm glad right. I got Flexion. plugged back in from our last time. Perfect. I'm so glad to have a job where I can push yeah. fun buttons. I have <laughs> one job to do. What is it's the green stupid. One? And I'm going, going to, to do, do it. it. I love that scene. All right, so the uh, movie starred a, well, let's call it the D-list lineup of 80s stand-up comedians. But the A-list of kid actors of the 80s. They oh, were on sure. the list. Yeah, so there's Louis Anderson, uh, Richard Lewis, Richard Belzer, Tim Thomerson, uh, who is back. It's Doug Masters' dad. Several yeah. of these people are dead now. Franklin Ajay is also say, we there. need a moment of silence. Yeah. Well, too, so Richard Belzer passed away just a couple months and ago. Louis Anderson died. Last year. Yeah. Right, so yeah. pretty recent. But that if you think you know, oh well, we shouldn't speak yellow. We got to be nice um, to him because enough, no, uh, we do not have to do that. <laughs> strangely enough, Richard Lewis is still alive. He is. I saw him. Uh, well, he did a lot of Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's oh, kind he of did, the most yeah. recent thing that I've seen him. Tim Thomerson. Out of. Yeah, that's Air what I'm America. Two Air America guys. Air in this America movie. and Doug Masters dad. Yes. From Iron Eagle. Yes. So it's it's a it's a oh, great. I'm 42 dad. years old, man. <laughs> that that still to this day shook me to my core. <laughs> <laughs> what what did he just say? <laughs> and the guy from Ghostbusters. And and uh, also yes, Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson and John Goodman is also John in. Good. Yes, Dan Connor himself. 
Dan Connor. The movie had a budget of, I have no idea. I literally, nowhere I looked were you able to find the budget information for the wrong guys. It's almost like they erased it from the internet. They didn't want anyone to know what they spent on they it. Had no, it's like, dude, if it's over 50000 it's too much. It's too much. <laughs> yeah. But the box office for this movie was $1 million. All right. So let's assume. guessing <laughs> that they did not make it for less than a million. Let's I'm assume that, that no. they paid a million and only lost half. Yeah, sure. I think that's being generous. That's we'll just say generous. that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Richard gosh. Lewis had to command a million by then, didn't he? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> His not as a movie star. I mean, he's a maybe th- lifetime total at that point. <laughs> Very successful stand-up comedian. But what's his biggest credit as a film? Uh, Wagons, Wagons East. Prince John in Men in Tights. Right? That's oh, I mean, that. tights. Yeah, that was no, it was Wagons East, dude. Or Wagons. That was uh, what's his name's last? John Candy. Yeah, oh. that's true. That was a terrible movie. All right, Grace. What would you guess that this is rated on IMDb? Grace's eyes are like, why am I on this podcast? Well, I already looked. Oh! <laughs> is that- wow. We do not do research. Wow. All right, well, if you look, then just let the people know what the rating look, is. I was just looking to see how bad all these actors were <laughs> while watching this movie. I was like, there's no way. You mean you were watching your phone while you were watching a movie? You can't do that. She was doing research. I was doing, doing research. research. I was yeah. doing research on the It's because she had to because her dad guys. was laughing so hard through the whole thing. I'm sure he was. He's there like, was barely you're any like, laughing. Dad, <laughs> Dad, you gotta watch. You gotta make your outline. Stop laughing so much. It you, was, this movie's so it, funny. It was very silent in that room. Like, <laughs> what are we watching? Right, it was like just a sitting five there petting point, his cat and not laughing. Yeah. It's like five point something. Five point one. Five point one. one. Which that's seems bad. high. That's uh, that's th- I mean, that's pretty low. Five. I would have said the lower. turn from four to five. <laughs> I get that, but the turn from four to five is pretty trash. It is. It, it really someone is. Someone in the eighties really identified with this movie. They, there's people that like it. I mean, this was suggested originally. Somebody wrote an email, and I think is I think it was James. I'm gonna say the guy's name wrong, but his last name was Moreno. And it was Mailbag 16, I think. He wrote in and suggested the wrong guys. That's how it ended up it's, on the list. We love all of our listeners. Yeah. Not yeah. always all of their ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know who loves this movie is all those people in the world that really love Cub Scouts but never went on to Boy Scouts. For okay. some unexplainable reason. So wait, hold on, because right there just shows how ignorant I am about all things Cub Scout, because I thought that this was a Boy Scout thing. Nope. Cubs, it's Boy Scouts, Boy Scouts. Eagle oh, Scouts. This no. is like kindergarten, pre-kindergarten for Boy Scouts. Can I tell you a story about my Boy Scouts? All experience? my jokes are, I, I can't wish use you any would, of them Charles. Now. This is exactly so the reason I, I am happy I'm here. Oh, good. When I was a little story kid me. living in North Carolina, out in the country, kind of a town like Burlington, small, yeah. lovely. We had a cow farm where they pastured cows and did milk, and I would let the baby Baby calf suck my fingers. Whoa. Whoa. Very nice. But that's not Whoa. the story I'm going to tell. Good thing you made that cut that's right there to for finger, a, that's James. That's a story for another time. Wow. Uh, I, I was going to join the Cub Scouts, and I went to the first Cub Scout meeting, and they were talking about doing all kinds of stuff, and my parents were like, no, we're not doing this. That's too much commitment. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. You're right. Your that's parents? too much. Because I didn't want to. I just wanted to let the cows suck my fingers. We. <laughs> wow. All right. I love. This is it. This is why. And make James. out with Christy in the cemetery. That's all. While the cow was the cow involved? No, the cows were a little far. They're across. The town. cow's name was Chris. The cow's town. name was Christy. Like, Charles. <laughs> no. One day. No, I promise you. I've never if we done ever that. do a dark week on BMR where there's just yeah. a week we don't release anything, yeah. I am going back through every episode and I'm going to compile <laughs> an audio clip of all of your just. out of context quotes. I just wanted to let the cow suck my thumb it's and very, all these other ones. It's very you, soothing. They're very. They're I can't very good wait with that. to do that. The baby calves. Okay. No, I understand. I understand. And it's they not were weird. all chained up by the fence. In wow. context, not probably, weird. Probably. Out of context, very weird. Yeah. Oh, and I used to get the milk out of the big freezer cooler thing, oh, and the, it wasn't homogenized, so the cream would rise to the top. Of course. Yeah. And then you pour that on your your uh, Captain Crunch. That's right. Just like Macho Man always the says, best the one always rises to the top. Captain Crunch ever. The uh, who's Macho Man? Macho Man Randy find Savage. Some cream on my way home. <laughs> the um, the movie <laughs> has no rating on Rotten Tomatoes. No critics have reviewed it oh, on really? Rotten Tomatoes. We I are, didn't look that much into it. We are not that far off <laughs> from not. being able to make a huge we impact make a on huge the rating of this movie. This movie. A zero or a one hundred. <laughs> yes. Uh, we we'll choose. But there or, is an audience score. So over a thousand people have rated it on there, and the audience. Let me score, guess. Let me guess. Yeah, thirty-four. No, that's what I was going to say. Actually. 51%. Guys. 51? 51%. Wow. 5.1 and 51? It's exactly the same. Wow. Whoa. I know. That's crazy. That means that just more than half of the people that watch this movie love it. Just over half. We'll find yeah. out today whether we'll that's see. the case or not. If we get two and two. Do we have any decision. people helping us? 
Uh, we do have some patrons that are right, so good. maybe they're they going to help us. All right, we'll see what we'll see what happens because I know it, it's like a three one in this room. I can tell already. If you've got feedback for the show, even just listening here for the first ten minutes, if you're like, man, I want more stories from Charles or Charles, <laughs> I have a story about also letting cows suck my thumbs. Please yes. email the show at this show is trash at gmail dot com. We will uh, read your stories at one of our mailbag segments, and you can get on the show that way. Otherwise, there's all kinds of other ways to interact with us on social media. We're very active, and you can also join our email list. So we send out newsletters every month. You can also get our list. Right now, it's almost 700 movies long. 700 movies. The list that we pull randomly from for ep- from epi- or for episodes, you can get that if you join. You go to badmoviesrule.com, and you can sign up there for our email list. And lastly... If you've been listening to the show for a while, if you enjoy it, We're and sorry. you want more of a VIP, and you've survived, I should add that yeah. in there, and you're still here, amazing. <laughs> uh, you want more of a VIP experience, you can join us on patreon.com slash badmoviesrule, and from there, you get even more of us, even more of more. our content, more, more Charles stories, more yes. after, after the episode's done, we keep recording for a while, we do games, hangouts live, we do a Discord, all kinds of things. You can jump on there, and it's, again, patreon.com slash badmoviesrule. Rule. It's pretty awesome. All right, you guys ready to jump into I'm the ready. wrong guys? I'm ready. 1988. Let's jump, let's jump out. Let's just, <laughs> let's just jump over it. <laughs> let's into something else. Let's, let's just skip just, the show. Let's talk about a Have different a 12 movie. Twelve minute special. <laughs> hey, it was wrong. They had the wrong guys. In the oh, zone. nice, nice. Well played. <laughs> well played. They did. I think. Look, here's here's my synopsis. Okay. Uh, Tell me if you think this is, in one sentence, the plot of the movie. Okay. Tell me if you think this is accurate. A uh, giant six-foot baby man <laughs> won't let go of his childhood, and his reluctance to move on with his life yes. almost gets his friends killed. Someone's only got one person. Nailed it. Accurate. Yeah, you <laughs> got really that. really just holds on to that one little One plate. little part. I made it his whole personality. Yeah, right? he was because he was a total. I loser. think that's like <laughs> he's sitting at home with his mom still. I think that might be just legit for he's Louis dep- Anderson in general. Well, look, have you ever had? I mean, you guys, he's you've depressed. had kids. I know you obviously are only just recently an adult, but you know how kids will do that thing where, like, for six months, their whole room is like football, and that's their yes. whole personality. Or K-pop, it, maybe, or, or, or K-pop anything, or whatever. Yeah. Star Wars. I'm in K-pop I can tell mode you that, in my house. <laughs> I can tell you that for a time in Gangnam Style. <laughs> For for a a small time, he's the father of K-pop. That's the only K-pop song I know. (laughs) For a small time in third grade, I knew everything there was to know about dinosaurs. Right, I I hate dinosaurs. But then eventually, jump in a fire. (laughs) Yeah. You know what? You know what this movie has that Who I hate has even a more than dinosaurs. Take about I hate dinosaurs. dinosaurs. I don't believe dinosaurs. I don't, think I don't they're believe real. in dinosaurs. <laughs> you don't they're not even real. <laughs> I, I don't believe in dinosaurs. You don't think they're real? Chickens are dinosaurs. Uh, like still, they're birds. Yeah, same thing. With hollow bones. Yeah, same thing. I was gonna get a chick for my cats to kill for Easter. You should have. What is wrong with you? That would have made it a more problems. magical Easter for them. It's been a long day. Here's my. Here's I the point. I thought so too, but my daughter, who's thir- 14, said that's not a good idea. If we could work our way back to the point here, the point is. <laughs> what was the point? I'm totally lost. Where are we even at? after your three months of being everything is about my personality as dinosaurs, you eventually moved on to something else. True. There's RC this, cars. Louis Anderson plays this kid, man, baby. I'm not exaggerating. My, like non, he you never know who he could have been is Baby Huey. I think my wife said <laughs> this is Baby Huey. I in said human the form. same thing. It's like this is yep. real life right. Baby Huey. He really is. He right would have been a much better Baby Huey than Baby Huey yes. was. And he, all you had to do was paint his face and not put yeah. a costume. No, on. exactly. No, so he basically has grown up and. Cub Scouts is still his favorite thing, even as a grown adult man. Yes. yes. Well into his Cub 30s. And point. as James just learned, that's the lowest level of, of Boy Scouts. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought well, it was Boy It's interesting. They don't talk about like what he does for a job. What he does. He doesn't have a job. He's like he's laying like, around his house all being All of depressed. a sudden, it just cuts and it's, it's his adult. He's an adult. Yeah. And then nothing and has like, happened. And you don't know what he does. Well, he's in that. <laughs> yeah. I guess the neighbors are dilapidated because right, they're trying to sell it off. But his mom will sell the house. Right. Yeah, yeah, he, but, but he just there. They're the last just people there. in the house yeah. in the neighborhood. There's no cars in the driveways <laughs> next door. It's true. All the houses are just destroyed. They're all, yeah, just it's like they're all flop houses. There's people shooting up meth and doing cocaine. I actually probably do cocaine like off. Yeah. 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 yeah, you're right. And then here's Louie on his porch with his Cub Scout book. and every, I'm so like, sad. There's crackheads all sleeping in the... All my friends, the, friends went on to do great things, and I'm stuck in town. No. So, yeah, but basically the premise is this. We Well, we start off in 1961. Yes. Right, a flashback where they're all children, and there's a couple of big child stars playing the child yes. versions. So we got 
Jonathan Brandis, who which tragic story. Yes, very tragic, but but, but yeah. was famous for a lot of roles as a young man. My wife had a crush on him. He, he was too. the original the original bit Bill. Uh, he was the original Bill Denborough in the It uh, TV series yes. with Tim Curry. He Sequest. He, Sequest. He did a. A buddy movie with Chuck Norris, I think called Sidekicks. Oh, which is on I the sort list. of vaguely remember that movie. And so, I mean, that was a, as soon as I saw him, I knew exactly yeah. who that was. And then Josh Saviano, yeah, is from the other Wonder one. Years. That's right. He Our, was the goofy kid on Wonder Years. Yeah, Fred Savage's yeah. buddy, right? Yeah. And uh, they basically are playing little kid versions of like these comedians. So like, there's the like nine year old Richard Lewis who's like still neurotic about yes, everything. Yes. And I liked uh, young Richard better than old Richard. <laughs> You're not a Richard Lewis fan. I I thought I liked him, and then I saw this <laughs> I movie. I was wrong, and I was wrong. I thought I liked him. I, I, thought, I thought I was yeah, in home. Exactly. I think Richard Lewis is really great. Yeah. I then, don't, Of course, he's not. I thought I liked his neurotic humor, and Here's I thought the, it would be really fun to hear him. And, and I people don't weren't going to like hate him, but they did because he's. Horrible, and he hates I don't think cots. you can judge a person. <laughs> he can't set up a cot. <laughs> I don't think you can judge a person and their uh, amount of, like, their entire body of work by this movie. Because legitimately, That's fair. That's there fair. are actors yeah. in this movie who did fantastic things and showed zero but, of it but in yeah. this Is movie. Richard Lewis one of those? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying how you can't necessarily. It but might be true. In so Richard Lewis's case. The young Boy Scouts are, young Cub Scouts, I'm, you know what, I'm, if I say boy, I'm not I'm not doing this all episode. It's, you know what I mean. to the Boy Scouts. Okay, but these young Cub Scouts are tormented by the Grunsky brothers. This Grunsky's. Is what the flashback serves its purpose to, yes. you know, kind of set that all up. And the kids... Have have this shouting match with the Grunskis in the cul-de-sac, and one by one, suddenly they start vanishing, like it's the rapture or something. Really? Right? They're all just I must have tuned out there disappearing. And I thought, remember what Jenna, or the other my other daughter Jenna, was sitting there, and she was like, "Is he schizophrenic?" And I'm like, "Oh, what, what if this whole movie is about his <laughs> severe <laughs> mental problems? Yes. He's actually living in a home. He's not even at home. <laughs> his <laughs> mom left him mouth. years ago. Yeah. That's what his I'm saying. mom's been dead for ten years. That wow. would have been far more. That was dark. You went. You took I it went. too damn I far. Did. Dang it." <laughs> I'm trying, but I sometimes yeah. take it too far. I don't know what to do. But it fades in, and he's sitting there on his porch asleep. Now the neighborhood's a crack house place, basically. <laughs> yeah. And he's thumbing through, and he goes in to talk to his mom. And mom's like, you should invite your old buddies to yeah. have a reunion. I'm have a reunion. Also, one of my favorite tropes of all time, important information on the news. There's a killer on the loose. Yep. I know what I'm going to say, though, right? But, well, You put this in your own movie. But I did it to make fun of the fact <laughs> that it's happening. Your own movie, James. I know. I can't believe it. I know. As I angry did. as it makes you. I did it, you did it for that reason. You know, I have other stories about people actually finding out information from newspapers and news. It actually happens oh. in real life. Well, well, that, okay, I mean, that's whatever. the whole point of newspapers, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> sure, I guess. Like, yeah. They, they yeah. wouldn't exist that's otherwise. Right. But the exact information that the yeah. audience needs I can't remember. in that I moment. I think it was some murder podcast. Was Basically, like. John. we find out John Goodman has robbed an armored car, and him that's and his Duke gang Duke Earl. Is Duke Earl. That's a great name. They made a song about him. That's how great he was. And oh. I just got to say this, okay, that's before cool. we move on. Louis Anderson is the it's worst amazing. Oh, human. Uh, not him as a person. I was going to say that. But it's his character. Here's the thing. They all have their own names in the movie. Yeah, what is so up with that? I can't be like, Louis Anderson is the worst without yes. making it seem like I'm talking about the guy. Do you want me to show you something even more amazing? What's that? All of the good guys have their real names. All of the bad guys have character names. Well, why is that, though? I don't know. Like, well, there's Richard Belzer and Richard Lewis and all these guys. They're real names. Because they were trying to get these comics into this movie. So people go, oh, I love Richard Lewis because I got hit in the head by a horse. Okay, and but I want Eddie to go Murphy was him. never Eddie Murphy in any of his I, movies. Well, ask. Axel Foley. Ask what was this guy's name, the director? <laughs> uh, uh, what's his? Uh, Bilson. Bil Danny ask Bilson, Bilson what his deal is. Yeah, well, let's write him a strongly worded letter. Let's do that. Why okay. weren't you creative enough to come up with Some Ashley McTalkie news? I think that the, <laughs> that these comedians were not actor enough yeah. to respond to a fake name. That's the okay. only way they could get them to like turn on cue is like to yeah. use their real name. That's true. I, I thought it was. I thought it was very strange. When I'm yeah. looking it up, going, "Wait, that's Louis," and then his name's Louis Anderson, yeah. and that's Belzer, but that was his last name. Can we just <laughs> take a second here before we bring in the other older versions of his friends to say that Louis's got a weird relationship with his mother? Oh God, <laughs> it's yeah. strange. And he's they're touching each other a lot. They're constantly like on each other, arms around each other. He still lives at home. He doesn't appear to have a job of any kind. I think that whatever mental capacity that he's deficient in because he's still living as a nine-year-old is probably her fault. It could be. 
I'm guessing. Sometimes that is a, there's a, there's a nurture nature issue. There. Yes. Oh, we passed something. We the passed, all consuming we, mother, right? Yeah. We passed something. What oh, we pass? bring it up. Well, what belt guy? Whatever his name is. <laughs> oh, yeah. ah, the belt when he maker. was younger, when he was younger, yes. and the whole belt thing started yes. from this. The Wonder like, Years kid. Kid's older sister, who first of all doesn't show up in the rest of the movie. No, nope. got an older no. sister, and no. she's got a bedroom. That's it. She's just gone. We found out she's say, a stripper. I was amazed she was as closed as she was in that scene. <laughs> yeah. So we'll let's start. We'll start with like, him then, because we got to introduce everybody anyway. So we we meet the older yes. versions who are scattered across the country, and right before they're all about to come back, we see what they do. And so Richard Belzer's character, you're right, Grace. Had this moment as a child where he went into Louis's older sister's room yeah. while she's dancing. Yes. First, like a skis, was peeking, peeking through the, the keyhole. keyhole. Right. Comes in, and what is his big move? His, you know, he's yeah. gonna mack on this girl. It's like you would he, look sexier with a belt, belt. on. <laughs> You'd look more stacked. And then he just <laughs> wraps a belt around her, and then she gets punched. But like it's like the most obnoxious punch sound effect. Right. Of and all he, time. then he comes flying out the door. Out like, the door. Ooh. Right. And so he had this formative moment with the belt in this girl's room, and he decided to make his whole, whole personality. Career this. He's like, uh, a, is he a fashion guy? I don't know. He just makes belts. Just so he can. Apparently, he we don't just know he so does. he can go around and put them on people. And talk. On girls. And talk. Yes. yes. That's the, and impress. He, he put made the moves on all of those girls. girls. And then his, his, Except then his, his assistant, assistant punches him. He First of all, one of the most unbelievable... There's, there's one later at the end, which is the most unbelievable thing that happens in this movie. But the second most is that Richard Belzer has so much game that all these models are like <laughs> falling oh. all over him. <laughs> right? I'm like, oh, we please. I keep hitting this with my face and scaring myself. It's all good. Richard oh, Belzer yeah, ended up weird. as a as a beat cop on SVU for yeah. a reason. <laughs> he's okay. not, right. You mean he's not an attractive, sexy guy? <laughs> no, what do no. you think, Grace? If he came up to you, would you be like, "Oh, I'm oh, all I want this, this guy. guy's belt yeah. in my life." Yeah. Let's assume he was no, a little more he age gives, appropriate. He gives to you, one to Louis's mom, yeah, and like wraps it around oh. her, and then he pulls out a collar for the dog, and like <laughs> you well, thought it was a collar I for the mom. Collar for the mom. That's where I thought that was going. I was like, "Oh, oh, he's going in strange places." We also have Richard, who Richard Lewis became a neurotic dentist. Okay, yes. so he has his whole monologue. Yeah, about that's when I realized the actors' names were the actual characters. Yes. because it said Richard Lewis DDS on the door, and I'm like, wait, that is Richard Lewis. <laughs> right, he's the only one who's who. I mean, probably the most recognizable. How could that guy possibly be a dentist? I, he's too neurotic. He'd be so neurotic about germs and everything. Yeah. Oh gosh, I, I could drill this tooth, yeah, but then if I drill it, and oh then my later gosh, on do it you comes know out, how stressed that would make me if the dentist was like that. <laughs> oh my god, oh man, you'd have to just do. Full like, under sedation. Seriously. <laughs> like, legit, you could not. No way. Seriously. That's where that came from, probably. He's the first guy that ever introduced that, because all his patients kept running away, and he's like, well, well, maybe if I sedated these people, then I could actually get money from them. <laughs> we get Tim Thomerson's character, who is a surfer. He likes, like, man, he lives in, like, this VW like, van. I thought yeah. that was Louis' van, and then I realized, no. It no, was it wasn't. It was well, they, they had, like, a uh, like a mobile home or something like That's that true. behind it, but he took off in it and left his yeah. old lady on the beach. For... Uh, like, he lives on the beach and surfs. Yeah. yeah. And then we also have Franklin, who's a radio psychologist. Basically, he's got one of those call-in shows. Where now people, he's the love doctor. He's, yeah, they solve. Uh, he solves no, problems no, no. on K Love. He's the. Uh, I it's, ain't no radio millionaire witch doctor. That's right. He <laughs> says the best kind of talk is Frank talk. Frank right, talk. that's the name of the show, Frank <laughs> Talk. Because he was a sensitive kid. That's right. He was the one that was trying to help Louis' mother as a child. Uh, uh, yeah, in the whole movie, he's right. trying to reach out to the bad guys right. and solve the problems. Yeah, no, I actually liked Franklin in this. So I thought he wasn't too bad. But that's basically all the guys. So these yeah. four guys come back to Louis' house. They sing their stupid, you know, den song when they come opens on. the door. Oh, hey, you guys, you're here. Yeah. yeah. I'm not oh exaggerating. God. That was we dialed <laughs> in. Yeah. I thought Louis was here. I thought his ghost was in the room. <laughs> How how much later is this? Is this twenty years later? Well, look, if they're nine years old in nineteen sixty one, and now it's nineteen eighty eight, right? So you're talking almost thirty years. Twenty some years, yeah. Twenty seven years. Twenty seven years. So you're thirty five. The sisters yeah, maybe sixteen. Right. Yeah. Si yeah, sixteen in there, or whatever. So now thirty years later, she's forty three ish years old, but and she's a stripper. She? They <laughs> said she's no, a stripper. No. She's a stripper. Oh, she turned really? into a stripper. Yeah. Yeah, because because they mom asks a question or no, no Richard comes in like, hey, where's your older ear sister? Muffs. And she he earmuffs well, mom fix your hair. to say she's a go go dancer, oh, which yeah. is just a nice way to say oh. she's a stripper. Yeah, but she's like yeah. 45. forty five. She's a forty three year old yeah. stripper. Then, yeah. yeah, yeah, in this town that they're in. Look, so I mean, you know, she probably I mean, I'm not they don't even know she's in the crack house next to them. I'm not, <laughs> just right there. I'm not saying that there are not some fantastic looking forty three year old women, uh, and that's yeah, a thing. Yeah. However, there's some fantastic forty six year old. Given one. Given Louis 
given Louis's weird personality, it's entirely I'd possible. I'd like to meet her. She's buried in the backyard somewhere. <laughs> I don't. And that's do that. the second time you've done the glasses thing to me in like three <laughs> I'm days. Sorry, sorry, by sorry. the way, sorry, Clint. I get excited when I'm around you. The one time I was rubbing uh, your chest. Yes, you were. All right, yeah. so that let's move on with this. Good Lord. Me. <laughs> the uh, the next person we're introduced to is in fact John Goodman, aka Duke. Uh, the we man. We forgot the hormone prison that Belzer says. Hormone prison. He's talk, I don't know. He's some. I, He's talking about something. He says, I would have been hormone prison as a teenager or something like that. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember that at all. I, yeah. Sorry. Um, it wasn't all right. worth remembering. So, <laughs> John Goodman. We're, we're moving on to the villain, Duke Earl. Duke Earl. And the first scene we get with him, we, we were told one thing specifically about his character. The man hates pancakes. Hates them. Hates them. Okay. Really, don't you he dare. really, really does hate them. Like a deep. He hates hatred. them almost as much as I hate squirrels. Right. So when Danny Bilson's sitting around writing the script, he's like, "We got to give them a, some kind of quirk. The bad <laughs> yeah. guy's got to have a quirk. <laughs> it's have what a if?" Quirk. And then Danny uh, uh, or Paul DeMeo comes in. He's like, uh, "What if he hates pancakes?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's brilliant. Because why not hate pancakes? On to the next thing. Yeah, uh, they should have done more with it. I, I think like I they should have set up camp and started <laughs> making breakfast. <laughs> And like made pancakes, and that really pissed him off. It launched his whole crime spree. Can I say I'd like to go to that pancake house? Why I would too. Why are they at the pancake house if he hates pancakes? We know the reason why. Why? Because the guy that double crossed him and put him in jail was working there. He didn't realize until he saw the picture. That's true. Oh no, he he knew that because he went up there to ask for the manager. He's paying his bill, and then he sees the picture. I I truly believe that in that scene, they're there specifically because that because they're going to do that. Well, yes, the movie does. It's possible. I'm not really doing a getting the weeds on this movie as far as that stuff. That was the other Air America guy. (laughs) That was Art Lafleur is back from Air America. You're right. And uh, there's a great line, because when he comes up to pay the bill, he points at the picture of the manager, which is Art LaFleur, he says, get your manager. He's like, hey, I, I wasn't the one that fingered you, man. Like, I, I didn't I didn't <laughs> rat you out, right? And uh, he turns around, he actually has this great line from John Goodwin, no one jacks the Duke and lives to serve him pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a great line, I write on paper. And Duke can't shoot anything. Dude, Nothing. Duke cannot no. hit a no. thing. Well, well he no. hit that pancake about fl- 17 yes. times, and so it it He can nail face. them syrup bottles, no yes. problem. Yes. I mean, that was very dramatic. That's true. The pancake face with the eggs and the bacon yes. lands perfectly, it's and then like the syrup pours on him. Perfect. Yes. He try, he shoots Art Lafleur's character dead essentially, and I think uh, he died of a heart attack because the bullet went <laughs> yeah. straight by without actually hitting. I think him, he just though. fell down and hit his head on the counter. Actually, yeah, they got suffocated no by pancake face. Well, face. well, this wasn't a real place either. They, they obviously couldn't afford like a chain. No. If they just shot this at a Waffle House, this would have just been like a random Tuesday. <laughs> Nobody would have known. <laughs> it would have just been in the newspaper, like ah, another murder at the Waffle House. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. This is a pretty common occurrence at the Waffle yes, House, I think. Yes. But in this, it was a big deal. He comes outside. They have they put all the like at great expense that served no purpose to have this giant pancake, pancake. fall off the top yes. of the building. He shoots it just so he can drive it through it. Yeah, how does it end up in front of the car? Because it like it was going the other the direction. Roof. Yeah, yeah, whatever. and then he hits it. Time and geometry mean yes. nothing in this no. movie, Charles. Well, as you'll see as we go on. Well, maybe that's why Duke hates pancakes. They keep tracking him down. <laughs> it's the only like thing. chasing. It's, after. Not, it's like the pancake version of rubber. It's just chasing him. <laughs> it's just coming after you. <laughs> when he gives his backstory later, I thought he was going to talk about something about having to do with pancakes. Like, why are we ever going to learn where this deep seated oh, hatred that's comes from? But they never come back around. I to mean, it. I'm not a huge fan of pancakes, but no. I wouldn't kill people. Either. I think he legitimately hated pancakes because this guy was the pancake server guy that put him in prison. Yeah, could be. All right, so the the Cub Scouts that have reunited, they're going to go on a camping trip. He, they didn't know when they came that's what was happening, no. but Louis but Louis got all the stuff together. Him. We're going back to Mount Whitehead, guys. We got to get our badge. All this stuff. Right. He's we got every to. badge except for that one. The golden arrow. The golden arrow. He needs it. Yes. You're a grown man. What do you mean you need the golden arrow Who badge? Never made just it go buy one. Scouts. Go buy. Go buy. I one. I'll give you one, Louis. Okay? I don't think you can buy him. I, I will go and make one. <laughs> yeah, we got 3D to... printers now. He <laughs> doesn't even know. This is 88. They didn't have those. Only the, uh, C- the yeah. space people. As they're driving, <laughs> as CIA, they're driving out to, say. Uh, say. as they're driving out to the to go to Mount Whitehead, we NASA. we meet the yes. adult versions of the Grunskys. Yes. <laughs> on the way, who happen to be at the same convenience store. They're really good people. Amazing characters. Yes, they. Well, it's this Brian James. I, and I can't remember really the guy's name. Really like their Cadillac. And did you really like their? Cadillac? I would drive it. <laughs> it was awesome. I would legitimately. I would drive that thing. That I would Cadillac fix was it awesome. a bit. That thing was a pile, man. It was right. awesome. Have you seen my truck? Yes, I've seen your truck. <laughs> right. It smokes almost as much as that Cadillac. <laughs> we find out that the Grunskys have a free weekend because <laughs> their <laughs> their wives are out of town, and so how do they spend their free weekend? Well, once they spot these old Cub Scouts, they're like, we're going to follow them hundreds of miles 
just to mess with these guys like the good old days. Yeah. Okay. And that's what we find out. Well, he really, 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 really wanted to be a Cub Scout. Yeah, oh, dude, I can't believe we got thrown out of the Cub Scout. I know. As much as it ruined Louie, like being a part of it, it ruined this guy for not yes. being a part of it when he, he was a kid. He was so sad he didn't make it. I bet you that whole neighborhood could have turned out differently if they wouldn't have kicked those two out of the Cub Scouts. True. That's what the second. I assume about. everybody. That's, that's, what, the that's what the second about. one's about. Yeah. I, I believe that everybody moved out of the neighborhood because of these little that's quirks. That's probably true. <laughs> yeah, Louis just came around and would just keep talking to his neighbors until they all moved. <laughs> you guys want to see my Cub Scout book? <laughs> you know what's kind of sad is the kid that played Louis is far more attractive than Louis Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> was that the Sandlot's kid? I don't remember who it was. I remember watching with with this and Grace. You, you said something about the gap in his teeth. Oh, I know. It's like the gap in his gap. teeth is bigger than. Oh gosh. I don't know what you said, but it was hilarious. I don't know. So we'll have to cut that because that doesn't. That doesn't that's, really work. That's, that's not right. cool. That to was make a fun great joke. We teeth almost gap. We almost had. But anyway, uh, all right. Can I just so, say they they go on the hike? Yeah, so they and, get and, there to Whitehead. And yeah. it's nice that they decided just to wear what they were wearing. So Except- there's one man in a suit. There's one man in uh, uh Did he have leopard pants on with the sweater type thing? Two guys on? were in suits. Made yeah. out of real leopard. And yet Louis all dressed up, ready to go. This in mental giant case. Cub Scout <laughs> outfit. Where did he, he get have- a huge Cub Scout <laughs> outfit the hat from? too. Somebody specialty made that for him. There's a there's a canvas tent maker outside of town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that tent was unbelievable. And they are setting up camp in their suits. And of course, you know, guys, uh, where is it? I thought, I mean, oh, maybe I don't have it on the swimwear. I was just gonna do what? the laughing one. Oh. But of course, hilarity ensues. Yes. Okay. From the guy Not that can't movie. pound the steak into that the was ground. So dumb. Oh, I kept turning it into freaking <clears throat> the pretzels. A- the axe head that flies off <laughs> the axe head. I mean, classic comedy bits. I like that. Don't land. I like how that worked. Did you? I did because the tent falling was actually funny. Okay, well, we get Richard Lewis doing a stand up comedy routine. Cot was the most annoying. Thing. <laughs> he, he went. He went on for like three minutes. He even I could have had a about... king size cot, but <coughs> he even oh, like, what is this? Oh, look, it's happy to... to see me now. Am yes. I like? What am I doing here with this? Yes, cot erections. Cot erections. It was so so horrible. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> and what was his Hitler joke? I didn't even get it. He made I like Hitler three, jokes. Yeah, yes. he made a lot of it. He's like, I'm not opening this till Hitler comes back or something. Right. And like Grace, that. why do you keep talking about Hitler? I'm like, because he's know. Jewish. That's why oh, he keeps making Hitler jokes. But when he finally got the cut set up, and the hand, the axe handle fall, head falls and hits the tent, and it falls down. <laughs> yeah. Then it collapses. Then back it collapses up. back up. I laughed out loud at okay. that. Okay, that was funny. I'll tell you, there was one point where I actually laughed out loud. You'll, yeah. you can <laughs> vouch for me because you were in the room. Uh, the one thing that I also noticed about Louis that came apparent in the scene is that Louis Anderson never looks actors in the eyes when he's talking to them. Did you not? No, he's always looking somewhere else except at the person that he's supposed to be talking to. That's and when weird. Richard comes up while he's trying to start the fire, he's like, I just don't understand why anybody would smoke. And he's he's asking this question directly to hit Richard's penis. He's looking <laughs> yeah. right at his crotch and talking to it like this. It literally says, boy talks to everyone's pee-pee. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what my notes say. And then Belzer lights the fire by putting his cigarette in there. Yeah. And, and we get a fourth wall break by Louis Anderson, just, like Jim Halpert from The Office. Yeah, like, or, or, uh, yeah. That was dumb. He does that a lot. He, he does. Just, like, yes. And then we come to my most hated part of this movie. Oh, the, oh, oh we're the, already there? Yeah. I would like to think at this point, the best part of the movie has happened. It was uh, <laughs> Flo when the progressive commercial came on for the <laughs> second say, time and gave me I a reprieve. It was that, amazing. Yeah, the yeah. commercials were pretty good in this movie. I was <laughs> like, oh, oh, thank God, an ad. <laughs> the commercials were super <laughs> elevated this movie. <laughs> No, it's the great squirrel acting. Oh, yes. So the you Grunskis, know what I feel about squirrels. The Grunskis are parked yeah. up by the lake, okay? Yeah. And they've got all their junk food and beer cans and stuff everywhere. And he can't find his Cheetos and his Oreos, and no. he's mad. And we find out a squirrel has pulled them, pulled them up into, into the, the tree. tree. And I know you as a, I hate as a, hate, a squirrel I hate hater. I hate them. This I almost, must have I been. I tried to run one over yesterday. Did you? Did it give you like P- PTSD On watching purpose? this? Yeah, I did. My family freaked out. But I said, it's fine. You started, you stand up, you started shouting at the television, kill the squirrel! I'm like, I understand their hate for that squirrel. I've never you seen know a what? squirrel. I'll, I was going to tell you the story. Drag so. a bag of Cheetos into a tree. Oh, they'll do all, all kinds of stuff. I was sitting at my parents' dinner table eating Easter meal last night. Is that when you ran over the squirrel? And I look out the window, this beautiful window they have, and there's a tree branch, and there's a squirrel peering at me. 
Just staring just at Just staring. Like no one else is alive. Exactly. And I have a staring contest. They have them. a secret I Hate Charles Club. They do. They do. They're, okay. they're spying on me. Grace, <laughs> Grace is a member. And How does I she told know all about my it? kids. <laughs> yeah, if you hate squirrels, <laughs> I, I hate you. She's not just the president. <laughs> they were, that squirrel looked at me for a good 10 minutes. Yeah. Maybe that's a lie. But <laughs> a long time. I did tell my kids, I said, look at that squirrel. He's looking at me. It felt like 10 minutes. It, yeah, I can't remember who won. I think he did because I got distracted because yeah. it's just. Oh, squirrel. squirrel. <laughs> you know what the motto squirrel? of the squirrel hates Charles Club is that if you hate Charles, remember that he hated us first. That's true. <laughs> that's because that's that's they can hide their is. testicles. That's freaky. <laughs> What? Okay, well, let's let's do a little scenario here because this is what happens. <laughs> They're so angry, they yes, try to they throw stuff, at the, stuff at the squirrel. That doesn't work. Now, if you needed to kill a squirrel, yeah. would the method that you choose to do it ever be, let me climb up into a tree and stab <laughs> it with a knife? <laughs> They're going to eat him. He's got the pot underneath it. <laughs> He's got the pot. <laughs> what are the chances of being able to climb a tree and stab a squirrel? Think, 50, uh, not 50. high. Not even 50. You're either going to be able to no. or you're not going to be able to. There's only two 40. options. 60, 40. <laughs> 60, 40. <laughs> but if the squirrel is as dead as the squirrel that ends up on his head, then your private chances are pretty good. Oh, you can't. Because it was a taxidermy squirrel he was afraid of once it landed You have a better chance of lighting the tree on fire and killing the squirrel that, that way. Yes. With like and a jar of fireflies or something? Then stabbing it with a knife. Yes. I thought that was dumb. Okay. Thank you. But I did like the guy, his brother with the pot underneath, looking right. forward to having some squirrel for dinner. I, right. And he says, I want the drums. Well, this is one of the yeah. first times I saw Brian James <laughs> play something other than a bad guy. He's usually like a heavy and he's a bad you know, guy. a henchman. And, sort of. Yeah, but he's got kind of a goofy he's role. In, uh, he's in Does he have middle. six Thelman, chins right? in every other movie he's in? Yes, he does. <laughs> he's got a famously disappearing chin. Yeah, it's kind of weird that yeah, his chin yeah. is not there. There's like six of them. He's great in uh, Fifth Element. Yep. He, he's also You're making himself Tango conscious. No, oh, he's like, there's like, like different like... No, because yeah, because like, Brian James isn't even a big guy. He's skinny, but there's just no chin, and so it just goes yeah. ding, 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 like all the way up to his mouth, basically. I'm glad I have a nice pronounced chin. His mouth just well, looks like the seventh fold of his chin. Little spider stairs. They crawl yeah. up into his mouth when he's sleeping. <laughs> spiders. <laughs> I don't think spiders need stairs. That is a horrifying image <laughs> you just It doesn't climb anything. Me. <laughs> oh, my rock, gosh. You're going to have to rock Charles to sleep oh, tonight, no. Melissa. Oh, all right. No. So also, we we see that Duke is camping very close to our campers because he's just over the hill, basically. Right. Well, no, we forgot the one-armed Pete that never pays off. Well, that, not yet. Oh, not, yet. not yet? No, not yet. Oh. But trust me, I got this whole thing in you order. Do. You do. Look how many pages there are. You always I, I think I that I'm, I'm going sorry. to do it. I've got I, the whole I'll, thing. I'll be honest. <laughs> I, I, I kind of didn't... I watched the whole movie. You weren't paying attention. It was a little hard to stay focused. Oh. So I might, I might be a little scattershot. You're not, you need to get rid of your phone. I, you know, I was checking on Brian James and what else he did. Gotcha. Uh, so Duke sees their flag. So Louis raises the Cub Scout flag at, I remember this at seven. the camp, which is just a blue seven. Now, earlier on the TV, again, got to deliver that exposition <laughs> via TV. We saw if you have any information about Duke Earl, call the FBI Section 7. Section. And, he's and got, it's the same section seven exact flag. 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 <laughs> I, I get all the FBI logos that look just like Cub Scout. Flags. Exactly. Exactly. And they the set FBI their camps up with just no. like Cub Scout, old Cub Scout men would do. Yeah. Right. Weird. <laughs> yeah. And so he sees the flag. The FBI's out there. The feds. Yeah. They found us. Let's keep camouflage in this house. Like yeah, trying to put right. camo on yeah. the cabin right. that they have. That was the only no good line Richard Lewis. It. Richard Lewis delivered was, "Look at this house. Obviously, <laughs> this, these people are crazy or whatever." Right. It's like that actually made sense, Richard Lewis. Every time he's like. Where he's like, we got to camouflage his house. I just kept thinking of, I mean, because there's barely anything on it, right? Like people just walking by and be like, wasn't there a house here before? Right, it's gone. Where'd it go? The house go. And so when you've got the feds literally a hundred feet from you, and you and he fully believed it was the feds. Yes. Do you leave? No, you're like his I feel safe like, here. We should go. No, my, <laughs> my uncle Pete uh, used yeah. to be a great hunter up here. Right. Uh, we find that out later. We do no. find that out later. We so the so then. Whatever. He's going to stick around there. Then we get to the fire pit. It's the first night of the camp out, and all our guys are sitting around the fire, and they're of course, it's a fire, so you got to tell a scary story, right? So they yeah. talk talking about One-Armed Pete. Remember One-Armed Pete, the Cub Scout eater? And he would, you know, this guy that lived out there that would apparently eat Cub Scouts. We find out later there was a one-armed was guy a one-armed that lived guy. out here. Chopped wood. Duke yeah. Duke's uncle. uncle or something. So maybe some Cub Scouts did get eaten, but... Maybe, maybe. We find out that the guys played a trick on Louie back in the day who thought he was kidnapped by... But not only did they play a trick on him, they pulled him out of his tent, tied right. him up, put him on an actual spit. While pretending to be one-armed Pete. Yes, and pretended to roast him. <laughs> pretended. Pretended with a real fire. I'm like, 
Well, that's a little extreme. I mean, I'm not a prank guy at all, but that's that's, that's a definitely big not prank. why he's that's prank. how you. I'm sure. Yeah, that's how you prank yeah. people. We're that starting exactly, to get to the bottom of this. Yes, we are. It's exactly how you. Oh prank my gosh, people. guys! You were yeah. one arm Pete. <laughs> so you're saying you never had pranks like this when you were a kid? Not like that. I say no. We got to fire the machine back I up. I knew it. I'm gonna <laughs> get pranked. Now. Just, What'd you do? You, <laughs> be careful tonight. That's all I gotta say. After this little story, Franklin has to poop. I'll have to lock my door. Of course he does. You guys ever done the shovel and yes. the whole thing? I do not recommend it. No, it's awful. Bidets are awesome. Pooping in a hole. There's not no so bidets awesome. when you're camping. That's buddy. what I'm saying. It's not so great. And I was actually talking about going on a trip and taking portable bidet with me. No, they make those. If you're in the woods and you're pooping it's in there, a water bottle, and bro. What yeah, it seems like a bidet happens, there's a problem and something's <laughs> behind you. Okay. <laughs> That bear's little, peeing on me. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> little little you know, baby deer tongue. I, I, I've been camping at the uh, Boundary Waters. <laughs> I've been camping at the Boundary Waters, and they have these lovely pit toilets with little seats on them. Yeah, oh, yeah. And you're just sitting outside in nature. And I remember the first time I sat on one, I'm like, am I going to get like eaten while I'm crapping out here in the woods? <laughs> <laughs> the way you die. There's a bear shit in the woods. Is this how it goes? This is the thing. So he goes out. Yeah. So Franklin takes the shovel and he goes out to dig a hole and he's like, this is a good spot. Now, here's my first example of how time means nothing in this movie because it's the middle of the night and one of Duke Earl's little goons, we'll call him numb nuts number two, is out there one arm chopping <laughs> wood. In injured arm. The middle of the night. He's got to <laughs> chop some wood out I here. I could have swore that guy got hit. In the, in the wrong arm, and then his other one was hurt. Oh, I should say that his oh, Dumb Nuts number two got shot at the shot. pancake house. Yes. Yeah, ricocheted or shot back. Which we find out later, it looks like a baby gash in his arm. He's bedridden. He's like, oh, I'm dying. Because he's, you know, chopped. But now he's I'm going to barely shoot you later and see how you react to it. <laughs> I'm not going to be laid up in bed. I mean, he might have got You're going to be pretty pissed something. off about I'll it. I'll be mad. Yeah. I won't be chopping wood at, what, what is this, midnight at this point? And he's out there chopping. Maybe he course. got some uncooked bacon in the wound from the, from the house. <laughs> Franklin thinks, oh, it's one. One-armed Pete. It's one-armed yeah, Pete. Course. And so he drops the shovel and toilet paper and runs back to camp. Is Franklin the African-American dude? Yeah, Franklin's the African-American, right. yeah. So now they're all have a couple of them are having trouble sleeping because it's time to go to bed. And Franklin asks Richard for a sleeping pill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which he says twice just so the audience really gets take it. take half. I only take half. I well, he take takes it. the whole one. Why did he give them the whole one? He, because he already took the half he of the one. He took the half, half. Yeah, Who knows? Yeah, the other one. Who knows? But this is all to just set up a joke that Franklin will not wake up for the rest of the night. Okay. Now then, Louis. Now in the middle of the night, I have I, been known, by the way, to give people sleeping medicine. Really? Yeah. Okay. How's that worked out? For, we worked out perfectly. Nobody almost got shot and killed. No, we were in a relatively safe place. Oh well, then it's fine. I was very happy that I did it. As long as it wasn't a minor, you know. It was a minor. Oh great, let's do move on. Do you have to register <laughs> your address now? No, I just gave him the pills. They didn't do anything while they were asleep, other than sleep. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right, more Chuck tales. Uh, Chuck. <laughs> All right, where were we? Okay, I so told their parents when we got home. In the middle of the night, I'm trying to save you. And I, you uh, I totally <laughs> drugged your kid. It was awesome. I did. I totally did. It's now the middle of the night because it they, were as, they were asleep, but they wake up. So Richard and Louie wake up because Richard starts to panic. Franklin will not wake up because of a sleeping pill. They find out that Belzer, gone. Belzer, and, Belzer and, Tim and Tim are gone. Have disappeared. Disappeared. And they assume it's one armed Pete it's because gotta be Pete. Come, well, Franklin they don't saw assume. him. Richard assumed. Richard assumed because Franklin crazy. saw one armed Pete earlier. Yes. So he's like, Louis's like, we're going to form a search party and it's just you and me and we'll go get this axe murderer and save our friend. Even though all I have is a flashlight. That's right, guys. Yep. Yeah, and so with the battery is about to die. Yeah, before we find out what happens on that ill-fated trip, we do go and see where Tim and Belzer yeah, are going. They're not scamming to. on young people, maybe, and have an actual conversation about oh. why they should or should not. The virtues of hitting on twelve-year-olds. Well, and that's that's exactly the thing. Like, hey, remember the Girl Scout Girl camp Scout used to be camp. right over there? It's like, why the hell would you go at to a Girl Tim, Scout camp when you're Tim was like something yeah. years old? Yeah, at least Tim was like. We don't want to hit on twelve year olds. Well, they don't. They don't but, explain but, it. They say it. They yes. say they're going to go to the Girl Scout camp before explaining that they're going yes. to see the counselor. What's right. what's so scary is is that Tim actually thought Belzer might be scamming on twelve year olds. That's the point. The way yes. the dialogue was yes. written leaves it yes. in a weird, awkward yes, place. Very much so. And they fi they randomly find this place in the middle of the woods. It's I have like to no say, longer Girl Scout camp. No, I have it's to like say a, I like the scene. A wellness. 
like it's like a, a aerobic scan, like guru, life channeling life ch- guru type reincarnation but they're yeah. dressed like they're gonna do yoga yeah 80s and it's outfits. like fits those weird things that go all the way down and up right in the middle of the woods there's Women's this random banana hammocks is that what they <laughs> are <laughs> <laughs> There's this w- random like Jeez, people still sell new, those? new age <laughs> these new age fitness fanatic yes. thing. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's, new age fitness stuff. The, but yeah. the, the point is, is why is it in the middle of the woods? I don't know, but this is a great line because they got the real all, estate cheap. She's all the leader. The guru is like, who were you in a past life? And once I'm Joan. They're Park, having their lo- their and loan, I was yeah. uh, Betsy Ross. And I made a This flag. was a great line. Yeah. On Belzer's part. Yeah. He says, why do these people always channel someone famous? Why aren't they just like some regular person? Like, right. Why are they always famous people? Or the 14-year-old peasant boy that yeah. got killed by a yeah, runaway manure exactly. cart. <laughs> That's a great line, a great observation, because it's so true in these stories. People are always like, I was Napoleon in a former yeah. life. <laughs> right. Not like I was some poor guy in a stall and I got <laughs> stepped on by a horse and I died. <laughs> That's a good point. But why are we having this session? It's a, it's supposed to be the middle of the night because yes. they were all asleep. Look. Well, actually, that's a big part of cult of uh, fanaticism is you get your people sleep deprived and teach them and do at okay. three in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. She's yeah, like, you welcome. You can't sleep deprived by letting them sleep at three. Like, welcome to our evening session. You know, we of, have a meeting later tonight, James. Uh, at Twelve. Sh- we're not supposed to talk about. Yeah, that. sorry. Uh, <laughs> so they get this idea, like, okay, we'll we'll pretend we're ghosts so we can get laid by these chicks, and because that works, <laughs> we'll I, somehow let me hide in the air from, vent. From, from, <laughs> yeah. a, from a chick's a perspective, do vent. you guys often go looking for ghosts? To, yeah, uh, like I, every every guy, I've, every boyfriend I've ever had, does I found an air vent. Air vent, yeah. <laughs> You're just sitting by the oh, air vent and they start talking to, me to you. Like, right, so they yeah. see these two hot chicks and they're like, oh, we got to get these. Two. How do they get in those air vents? That's my question. Like, it's like all of a sudden it's Mission Impossible. And it's a huge air and vent. And they've broken into the air vent yes. somehow. Air vents are huge. You play the game. Okay. It's, you just crouch. You just press the crouch button and you walk right in. You have both of them, though? Like, <laughs> but they have the blueprints to this camp. How did they Well, out? maybe when they were 12, well, they, they weren't running the around. Button. Belzer was pretty interested in looking at girls when he was a kid. But by the time they get to the vent, the girls have switched with these with the Grunsky's wives have come yeah. in. Is that like, their wives? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I told like, you. I, I sorry, we're late, right? And these two women that look like, <laughs> I don't know. One of them used their face. The to, one, of, <laughs> one of them used their face to block a punt in a football game or something. Is what it, it looked like to one me. Of them and was, took a one clean. of them was the football. <laughs> they were not overly attractive ladies. No. Okay. And I now, did like their attitude. No, they're fine. Yeah, and they were they, funny enough. They were funny. Tim starts th- from the vent, pretending that he's John Wayne because the girl says she was Annie Oakley in a past life. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, That's little right. lady, uh, why don't you meet us in the steam house later? At, at this point, he's <laughs> running game on, he thinks, the two hot chicks yes. that used to be sitting right by the vent right. who have yeah. been replaced My by. My question watching this scene was, did no one else hear the voice? No, yeah. they like never cut to right anybody else. People right next to them. They're literally right next to somebody, and yeah. their vent no. is large. This is poor filmmaking. No, one but no they never it. cut away at all. <laughs> all right, let's get back to Louie and Richard, who are now hunting these two, a neurotic dentist and a six-foot man baby, are searching for an axe murderer in the woods. Okay, Who hasn't seen this play out a thousand times? <laughs> right. They get like, oh, here's the axe killer's footprints, Richard. Here's the toilet paper. They get to the the... the First of all, how do they see the house? It's camouflaged. Okay. <laughs> That's true. That's what I don't understand. <laughs> and nighttime. It's nighttime. It's camouflaged. They see the house. They get up to the front door, and he's like, whoa, we've got this axe. You come in swinging the axe, and I'll bust in. And I'm like, all right, let's just, let's just re- suspend disbelief for a second. I go, okay, if you really believe there's an axe killer in this house, what are you going to do? Well, the axe well, was outside. When I you was get gonna, in there. If you're an axe killer, or if you have an axe killer, I would think that your best weapon against them would be, you know, I'm going to bring an axe into this fight. Because if he <laughs> takes it away from you, he's proficient, you would think, with it. Maybe you try something you different he's not good with. <laughs> But well, the funniest thing that happens is Ernie Hudson is one of is the is numbnuts number one. It's like the kid sick yes. in the bed with the arm wound. Yeah, and then there's Ernie Hudson. And he's like talking about how we're gonna we're gonna calm Duke Earl down and we're gonna get out. Well, of There here was a whole fight that got cut yeah. out. Oh, like okay. like at the beginning of the scene, we see Ernie Hudson wake up off the ground, and the guy oh, like yeah. that was some fight you had with him. Like why didn't we get to see that? Did we like, not? I right. thought I just no. wasn't paying close enough. No, attention. it didn't happen. Beat oh. him up. The scene they, wasn't. It there. looked like they were there. There was tensions and stuff, but it cut away. Right. Now we get Ernie Hudson hiding behind the door with yeah. a gun or something, waiting for Louie to come in. <laughs> the man, the man 
taps him with the door. Like the door comes open, it's like bink, and it, and then he goes flying. He goes flying, cuts over to Richard. Like where's the other guy? Like he's got, knocked out over here. Got the axe, he comes in and nails it right on the bedpost, which is an amazing aim. That's knocked good out. <laughs> It, the, I could like tap you on the forehead and you would go flying. That's about what yeah, happened. He had a concussion from whatever happened with Duke. <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah. Ernie Hudson. He, he just an, did he a had ghost an inner ear disorder. <laughs> he had yeah, an inner ear right. disorder and yeah. he just freaking like he got a little off kilter and kept going a little vertigo. Yeah. Man, oh man. That guy didn't down. save New York from Gozer uh, to be treated like this. Is this just after that movie? Few, yes. It was That's just a few bad. years what later. His career? That was 84. This is four That's years sad. later he's doing this. That's sad. I know. All right. Meanwhile, Duke is not there to be fought by Louie and Richard because he's now gone to the camp to shoot up the tent down there with two. We've fully already learned. We learned at the pancake house that Duke has a lot of guns. Tons. A well, you, you saw a picture of the back of the car. Yeah, it's just truck like is loaded full, full of guns. Oh, yeah. And he likes to use lots of different ones. And I remember where Grace and we were watching it. And he starts shooting up the tent. And you're like, if he survives, I'm done. I, put, I was so not a single uh, shot. It's like all of his ammo is used up on this. You know, Franklin's asleep and in a few the tent. Of them went through his shirt inexplicably because it looked like they would have hit his body. Right, but right. They did not go through nothing. No. You know that you clearly shoot. Like if you are ever going to shoot up with the intent of hitting the people inside, you shoot. You yeah. shoot a half a person above the floor constantly. So in yeah. case they're laying down, you have not a chance good, in hell at hitting them. good information no. to know. But here's the thing. Even if the cobra across the floor, they're going to fall That's down. True. You'll get body That's shots. Even the cobra rule doesn't <laughs> apply, right? We, we saw cobra. We established all you have to do is lay on the ground and all the bolts will go over yep. you. But in this he case, he's laying up on a cot. cot. <laughs> he's elevated. He's elevated off the ground. Even well, like knee level, at least look, higher. This, than half is good, this is good movie making because there's a consistency here because he's just as bad a shot in this scene as he was in the pancake house. Right. He can't and then hit later. anything. And so he runs away. He, well, first of all, he makes sure to shoot the crap out of the picnic table just in case. <laughs> That's right. So my wife, I said... <laughs> At what point do you think he might realize this isn't the FBI when there's like a normal cooler and like cookies on the table with like an old I, canvas? I tent? can explain that. Yeah. He thought that maybe they were going to use that table and cooler to make pancakes later. Ah. And he just could oh, not he couldn't handle it. Leave yeah, it to I bear. Good, are those no. pancake supplies? Yeah. Get rid of them. Oh, yeah. Those Get them. FBI guys are making pancakes. <laughs> No pancakes for you in the morning. No pancakes for you. All right, so we don't know what Franklin's ultimate fate is because we don't cut inside to it yet, but we cut we back know to it. We know what old Franklin's ultimate fate is. You don't think they would is. kill Franklin no. in this movie? No. <clears throat> Although usually black guys are the first. The first, yeah. We do cut back to the steam house and we see that Richard Belzer <laughs> and Tim are sitting there waiting in their <laughs> towels. No one has seen them. They've infiltrated this woman's spa, and yeah. uh, the two Grunsky wives come in in full like biker gear, basically. Yeah. And they That's can't a big see each other yet. Sauna. It's huge. Yes. Until, really deep steam, too. Yeah. Have you ever been in a sauna yeah. before yeah. or a steam I can't room see even? I you. <laughs> I have. I've never been in a steam room that was so thick that you can't see it. They'd yeah. be like, where's the door? I can't. Like, come right. here, guys. I can yeah. hear you, but I can't see Especially you. Especially sauna rooms with like tile floors where you're going to slip and kill yourself several <laughs> times over. You're never going to be able to stand up. <laughs> they walk over. As soon as they get within eye shot of these girls, they go, well, we've made a big, big mistake, mistake here. But the girls aren't having it. No, they, they didn't make Make a mistake. They've been with Grinskis. The They're looking for some fresh meat. <laughs> <laughs> she said this was one of the only other good lines in the movie. I'm going to ride oh, you like God. a Harley yeah. on a bad road. <laughs> <laughs> the only good line in the movie. Uh, right there. It reminds me uncomfortably of that Clint Eastwood movie we watched. Yeah, right? A yeah, little bit. A little bit, yeah. And I thought, are the Grunskys about to get cheated on? <laughs> cheated. Right? Well, I think those women were completely fine with cheating on the Grunskys. I couldn't tell if they were trying to teach these guys Maybe a lesson. Maybe they were their sisters. Or if, no, it was their wives. Oh, it okay. said that they were. Oh, the, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I think they were. I couldn't tell if they were trying to teach these guys a lesson or if they were actually going to They might have been teaching them a lesson because they were like, let's go teach I think they were going to beat the snot out of them. I don't know. But these two run out of the sauna like they stole something. And those hot chicks were like, oh, look at them. Right into this male fantasy. But they're in the shower together. One of them's rubbing the other one's back. That's not how you shower. Are you telling me that that's not how it works? Because this is an integral part of my childhood growing up. That is such a trope. No, that's real. That has ever, to be real. Okay, there's like seven Friends episodes where Joey's like, Monica and Rachel, why don't you guys kiss? It's this, It's so stupid. It's got to be real. No. One is like, <laughs> like, got a loofah and it's just like loofing. I mean, it's hard back. to get you back. For no 
<laughs> you gotta have some help. <laughs> Do not. I'm never going to the gym okay. with Charles. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Charles. But, never, okay, but well, let's face said, it. I'm never going to the gym. My faith in humanity. Gone. But like, like, like Grace said, either. it's two in the morning, right? I'm telling you, that's how cults work, James. You don't understand. <laughs> Sleep yeah. deprivation this and is, cleanliness is important. I have actually the 70s, and this is like the yes. Manson. Like I, this is like Charles Manson. I girl. have to feel that the type of girls that would be showering together at two in the morning probably would. All right, that's fine. Oh. So in order to get away, the two two of our heroes here dress like women. I'm and trying when to I think say, of famous lesbians they might be channeling in the shower from dress. their previous lives, but I don't know any. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe no one Neely knew Earhart, back then. If they, yeah, no one knew. Yeah, I don't know. So in order to, to escape, they dress like women. And when I say they dress like women, they just put a pink and blue robe on. That's yeah. dialed in. And yeah. that's it. They Well, they hit the hair yes. nets. But then they go to the wax room. They oh, Well, they get yanked into it. They're like, oh, ladies, you're here for your <laughs> appointment. Your appointment. By the woman who's working the wax room at 2 in the morning. That's a cults. Cults. I'm telling you. They keep it's you not- sleep deprived. Keep you clean. They keep you waxed. <laughs> this is an important part of cult The philosophy. cult leader yeah, does not right. want any hair. That woman wants her ladies right. waxed. Waxed and clean at all hours of the night. The cult leader, right before that, we didn't see, was actually in there going, and if any of these girls walk by, you drag yes. their ass in here. You get them waxed You make up. sure yes. that's all Even gone. Even if they have penises. All of it. Wax that off. <laughs> she, oh, gosh. She goes, what are those? <laughs> what are those? <laughs> what are those? <laughs> what are those? <laughs> and they're just she out, has no idea. She's the glass window. They jump out the right. window like a cartoon, and they're on well, their like way. Like a cartoon. It's like Die Hard. They yes. have bare feet across yes, the glass. Like going, ow, 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 just like. Bruce was, Willis yes. in Die Hard yes. to get out. That was so stupid. Let's dive out the window so we They're don't get our balls up. waxed. That was so yeah. stupid. They're not cut up at all from the windows or anything. Right. They're like, just, are, we, are, are you assuming that once she figured out they were <laughs> guys, <laughs> are we assuming that once she figured out they were guys, that they were still going to get waxed? Like I, she said, she one tossed one them. Them. Yeah, she tossed them out the window as soon as she figured hey, it out. She's like, well, cult leader's branching out here. I guess I got to do my <laughs> I don't job. Know. All right, it's now by the time everyone gets back to the tent, and this is one of my favorite parts of this entire movie because of how bad it is. Uh, it's now daylight, and we get Louis and Richard are the first to arrive back from the axe killer's yes. house. Okay, they walk up, and to them, this is one of the all time double no cells. Okay, <laughs> Louis and Richard walk up and think Franklin didn't is believe dead. It. Right, okay? I was crying. And their best friend. Not Franklin. He no. walk up and Louis again, because he's a trash person, <laughs> his only reaction is, Oh, we're gonna be in trouble. We should get out of here. And he just turns to walk away. <laughs> okay. And, he's, and Richard Lewis one's like, no, no, we can't we can, just can't leave. We gotta figure this yeah. out. But neither of them seems super broken up no, about no, it. No, right. No. Big time no sell. Then they hear people coming, so they're like, act like you're dead, too. Now all three of them are acting like they're dead. Here <laughs> come Tim and... Did they all thought they were dead? Well, they're great actors, so I don't know how you wouldn't. <laughs> Belzer and Tim now, in their robes, come up, and then they no-sell it even harder than... The, oh, literally. man, all three of our friends are dead. That's mm-hmm. that's pretty dialed in to how the yeah, actual reaction like, was. Well... They're like, oh, man, they're all dead. Well... Let's uh, go get to the van. Where's the motor for the van? <laughs> <laughs> The one of the all-time no sells. I loved it because this has become a running thing on our show with people no selling things, and this is this is in the top ten for me. This is pretty bad. No sells, and uh, but yeah, once they all realize they're all alive, they're like, we got to get out of here because the Duke is here, and they go to the VW van, and the engine is gone. Why wouldn't it be? And this is the only time because I actually do like Richard Lewis, not so much in this movie, but as a stand-up comedian. The only legitimate laugh, and Grace can attest to this, is when he tells him to go check the the the, yeah, the, that the engine, funny, yeah. and it's not. He's like pointing at the tire. It's he's in like, the back. It's yeah. in the back. He goes back. He's like, I'm not seeing it. Is it small? And that <laughs> laughed out loud. The fact that he thought that it was still in there, but it just must have been really small. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we find out it was stolen. So how much do you think that van would be worth now, Clint? Ooh, lots. It's a split uh, screen yeah, VW classic van. I mean, people really? are, yeah. it was already in. Hippies are coming back, so they want those, those vans. vans. There's a couple that rip around town here. I see them yeah. really? up and down the street like in front 50, of the store. I want, they're like $40,000. I want one of those vans. Yeah, they're a lot. They're a death trap. They only go like 20 miles an hour. No, Love get it. out of here. <laughs> they go 40. Okay, fine. I, they I do, do highway speeds. It. Okay. 60, maybe. If you, downhill. If you really and try. And the fact that it's a split screen is what makes it expensive. Flames on it. Desecrate a VW. Real flames. Those two panels. 
original front of me, two glass ones are yeah. really worth a lot of money. Yeah. We just have the rusting pattern be in flame yes, shape, and yes. then you know you're good to and go. And that was his right? second Hitler joke. I don't remember what it was, but I'm like, why is he making more Hitler jokes? Yeah, well, because what do I expect from a car made by Hitler? That's what he, oh, yeah. because the yeah. engine's in the That's back, right? right? I'm like, okay, whatever. That was dumb. That was stupid. But they find out that it's been stolen by the Grunskis. This was their big prank to get these guys. They, uh-huh, this is where, and then they hung point, it from a tree. At some point right here, I say they're all nine year olds. But they still are. <laughs> what kind of suit was, uh, was t- Tim wearing? It was like a scuba surfer. Oh, no, Belzer. Suit. Belzer had to. Oh, surfer well, suit. Well, he had his extra wetsuit in that's the back right, of the That's uh, right. That's right. He had to change out of their that's robes, right, and Tim right. was a surfer. He's like, this is all I got. He's like, Here's okay. the thing. Like, you follow these guys hundreds of miles, and this is your plan. You're going to take the engine out of their car. Well, here's the deal, though. Yeah. With a Volkswagen, you could legitimately, in about 35, 40 minutes, get the motor out take of the out. car in that kind of time. And okay. one dude could carry it off. Two guys easily okay. take it out of the car. And it's like four bolts are on the bell housing and all the ancillary wiring and, and the fuel it. lines. That's it. It's air cooled. It's out. And then take four chains and <laughs> suspend it in the wood. Well, not that well, was for. You could just tap the tree lightly and the chains one fall One chain off. would have done it no problem. <laughs> four was so that they can have one fall off and then the other yes. one and then the other <laughs> and then it falls. It's built suspense. I was worried it was going to yeah. fall on Like, him. oh my God, they've got four chains. It should be fine. Oh, oh wait, there's only three. <laughs> So the Grunskys used this as leverage to get back into the Cub yes. Scouts, right? They said that's all that, the younger Grunskys. That's all wanted. they ever wanted. If you will give you your engine back, if you swear us in, and well, they they showed us the quick uh, flashback to them right. getting taken Drum, out. Yeah, no, it was a nightmare. Den. It was a nightmare. Was it? No, yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, it was the a flashback nightmare. was a nightmare from the younger brother yeah. while they were sleeping. I like in the, the, oh, yeah, with the firing like, squad. Yeah, also, yeah, that was when I realized that these Cub Scouts don't have a troop leader. That's all. Oh, that's true. It's Louie. Who's the adult? Yeah. They just yeah, and they're young. Their cut scouts are like little kids. Louis kicks one of the Grunskis out of the troop. Well, it wasn't. Why does it was a nightmare, that? though. I know, but maybe yeah, he was. Right. Maybe Louis was twenty <laughs> then. <laughs> <laughs> he did look older than all the rest. I don't know. They just don't have a troop leader even in the beginning. That's, that's weird. And, and Louis does not want to swear him in, right? I mean, he's just so begrudgingly like, raise your right hand. No, like this. Yeah, he okay. wanted to make sure he did it right. Up to his eyebrow, and he does the whole. You promise to be square and true and tr- trustworthy and all that stuff. And welcome to Den Seven. And he's I back think you got his there. voice dialed you really in. Really had that. <laughs> you are in. like channeling. I like the older brother. He's kind of like, oh, why do I care about these Cub Scout things? Right. He's almost doing it for his younger <laughs> he brother, is right? Yeah. And to put Volkswagen engines in trees for sure. So they go find like, all right, we'll take you to where your engine is. It's hanging there. But Duke and Ernie Hudson are already there. Got fight fighting, looking up like. The Why? FBI put the this FBI engine FBI up there just to bend my That's mind, right. man. Psychological We're watching warfare, John man. John Goodman's character, Duke Earl, go down, spiraling down That's and down and down into, into insanity. And the other, two, the other two that are with him are like, we got we to gotta make sure he's okay. Yeah, man. we got to stop, man, but we can't ever <laughs> do it. He's just getting no, worse. Getting I'm like, worse. what is wrong with him? He's That's getting so- worse. They, uh, they start to wrestle Ernie Hudson and John Goodman over this gun, and Ernie Hudson ends up getting shot. Yes. And they knock the engine out, and it shatters into a million pieces yeah. on That's- the ground. That would actually not happen. Like <laughs> it just wouldn't fall to pieces. Not exactly. No. Really, I would have thought. Break some fins, perhaps. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I survive that. No, yeah. Just the whole thing. And th- now the whole camper group is watching this happen from the safety of hiding behind a log. <laughs> but as soon as Ernie Hudson gets shot, Richard Lewis feels compelled oh to my. scream. What did he say? Oh, no, blood. Oh. Yeah. And he's a dentist. <laughs> has, yeah. Has he never done a procedure or anything where there's been blood? He doesn't go in while the cleanings are happening. He's like, no, no, oh, no. No, 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 no. And this is this, this is where I think I said they're all nine year olds because <laughs> they all jump up and run. Oh no! Yeah. Ah. This is the moment that if he was going to submit a tape to be considered to be a stormtrooper, that he would use. <laughs> it's Dukes. If these guys are running, they're not fifteen feet in front of him. <laughs> he's got a giant belt-fed rifle, <laughs> and he's going back and forth and hitting nothing. Nothing. They're. I mean, you can see him in the frame. It's point, not even a yes, big shot. Right? Point the camera in a way that makes it at least look like they're not standing right in front of his it's gun. It's true. Yeah. It's, true. <laughs> it's, it's so terrible. bad. <clears throat> they're just oh. off. They run. If if Louis Anderson is running through the forest in a giant. <laughs> red jacket i'm gonna be able to hit him and i've never fired that gun before in my oh, life Oh man! yes <laughs> i will right. agree with you and Thank the other guy's wearing a yellow wetsuit you could totally <laughs> see him running off in the woods this guy oh. used to come up here with his uncle with one arm who was a successful right. deer hunter uh, cub scout eater a cub scout eater lived off the yeah. land like guy you can't tell me he yeah. didn't train him how to shoot a little no. that's why I didn't it doesn't leave. take many True. lessons to get even 
a I, small bit proficient. I could have hit that. I've right. never even touched a gun if in my life. If you have, if you're one of our Patreons or whatever, just a listener, and you've never shot before, I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to the gun range. We'll bring some of my own weapons, and I will <laughs> teach you and guarantee we get you yeah. on paper in ten right. rounds or so less. If you're ever hunting down a Louis Anderson-like person in the woods, <laughs> that you'll be Which able to guy. or Louis guy. Anderson. Sized mammal. Size Doesn't mammal. have to be a human. Or it could be hunting people. Yeah. Um, all right. So they run away. Somehow yes. they're able to get away. John Goodman, who is, I will say this about his acting, is he is fully going. He's going for it. For it. He's unhinged. You can run, but you won't get off this mountain alive. And the next shot we see is them lost on a hillside. Uh, which we find out later is Mount Whitehead. Yeah, why, why can't I see Mount Whitehead? Why can't we see Mount Whitehead? Oh, this is that they place where arguing, we got lost as kids. They right? were arguing about the pack earlier, and we for, we yeah, lost this over this. This is important. The, back in the 60s, they had lost their backpack with their map and, and compass. That's why they never got the golden arrow, because right. they lost their pack. Right, while well, they were lost. And, they, and so they're, they realize they're in the same spot, right? Like, come on, guys, we have to just keep trying, and we'll walk this way. And, and, we'll, we'll and baby fine. Huey falls down the mountain. <laughs> and he slips Well, how did we get him up <laughs> last time? Well, before that, <laughs> when he trips and falls, he loses about 200 pounds as this 150-pound <laughs> stuntman is doing somersaults yes. down the hill. And you know because Louie's legs, God bless him, are uh, the size of tree trunks big. as he's, he's walking around. Because he's got these he's little shorts man. on yes. and his socks hiked up, and so you can see these thick tree trunks. They're, they're white, like the, the diameter of Grace yes. at her largest. But, right. Yeah. As a whole person. As a whole human. Yeah. And then when the guy's rolling down, <laughs> he's got like the skinniest little legs ever yes. as he's rolling down the hill. I was his stuntman. I'm sorry. I, I forgot. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> I forgot to tell you. Uh, yeah. She was. I was in, in the, the 80s. Movie. In, in so the 80s. Like, All right. How did we get him up? Right. The last she was reincarnated she as was. a famous person yeah, again. If I was in that call, I was, right. in that call, I was yeah. like, who were you in a past life? I was like, Louis I was Anderson. I Louis stunt stunt right. <laughs> <laughs> But I'd start crying. I just said it out of embarrassment. Unresolved trauma from yeah. a past life. Yeah. So that's a fast reincarnation. He just died last year. So. Yeah. yeah. So they're just like, yeah, how did we get him up last time he fell, right? And they do the chain of friendship where they're just holding on to each person. But they forgot he weighs like down the hill. pounds now. The problem is, is you can see even as they're going, that the hill is not that steep or big or big or anything i mean they're not even pointing the camera to make it look like they're aimed down it looks like a but parallel they, they line. had to do this to get some of the most fantastic rolling falling scenes i've ever seen in a movie okay whatever selling they didn't do in the murder scene they saved it all up for this one they yeah. oversold the crap out of it they, oh my God. they all slip they all slip and fall and it's yeah. pandemonium just like triple tumbles <laughs> ridiculousness they're, i can tell you that this does happen yeah we had a buddy you know we play with toy cars and stuff like that we were out at a place that had a big hill we were playing with our crawler cars, mm -hmm. and the one guy, bigger dude, Joe Santiago, whatever, uh, he goes up to the top of the hill because one of the cars almost made it out in the road, and he's up there. He's like, dude, I'm going to roll down this hill, and I'm like, that's way too much hill. No joke. And he goes, lays down to roll down this hill like we all did when we were kids. Yeah. He's probably 18 at this time, mm -hmm. and he gets going so fast that his arms and legs just fly out. <laughs> like He's legitimately <laughs> just out of control, tumble, roll. I believe it. It was nuts. I was like, you're such uh, an idiot no. after I found out he was okay. So that's legit. That <laughs> no, you that would actually Fall that happens, this, yeah. and you think of like, like the hill in Princess Bride where he rolls down and it's That's super what my wife steep. says, yeah. as you is. The problem is, is those hills, or the hill that your buddy fell down, and that one were very steep. Yeah, this, this was, not. was not a steep hill because every so time they like, cut to the see wide them shot, twisting their bodies, you can to see them trying yes, to roll. Yes, they yes. used all the tricks in the book, they sped up some of the footage. <laughs> <Yep. did> <laughs> <up the> <laughs> okay, they're. Don't cut to the wide shot where we can clearly see that there's like a three yeah, percent grade. Yeah, it's not a grade. On yeah, this hill. That, and even the last shot when they're coming to a stop. Yes, they're on flat ground. They are. It's really bad. I love the fact that they did any of this, but like <laughs> legitimately. Like, yeah, like you got to sell it, right? Like that's no, no. all you've got. I mean, it's not the actor's fault. Yeah, they've got to make it. They got to sell. It. They have to make it look viable, as good as possible. It's the it's the people that made them look stupid by yes. putting them in this scenario. <laughs> but find a be. steeper hill. You yes. can make the effects be stupid and still be funny. They yes. just didn't make anything of this movie. Yeah, it's true. And then they find the backpack. <sighs> they do. So once they finally land. He's like, ow, I'm lying on something. On something. It's from the from 25 years it's earlier. It's incredibly preserved. <laughs> yeah, my fizzies, <laughs> bro. Guys, there's stuff in here. 
year. It's <laughs> open year. It's rope and a flashlight. That was my fa- I kept saying it even after the movie yeah. was over. Oh, man, it's our pack, guys. There's stuff in here. <laughs> oh, it's got a rope in there and my old Cub Scout book. And you guys, it's got fizzies. You've got to play Louis Anderson for <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> what the hell is a fizzy? Is that a thing from the 60s? I don't know, but those uh, apparently, if you don't, don't know, apparently, if you don't put your Alka Seltzer in water and you just throw it in your mouth, you just foam out. That legitimately looked like bat, like soap, dish soap. Yeah. I'm like, are those guys? And it totally was coming out the side of their mouth, too. It was not even in their mouth. And it's like a two second shot. It's over before you can even process was, what you're looking so at. It wasn't, about wait, it wasn't worth the time. They, they were spent. like, <laughs> they, it's like they were doing crack. Oh, my God. Is he crack? All right, so they find they find. I don't know. Their, actually, I've never seen a, anyone do crack. What was in the bag? That's there was what a I imagine it's it like. like. Yeah. <laughs> These guys doing business. That's exactly what crack is. Snorping, Nailed snorping. This. That's snorping. Not even the thing. <laughs> that actually is when you do it and it's crack. You snorp it. You you snorp, snorp, yeah. Yeah. Snorping dish soap, purple dish soap, and that's what crack looks like. All right. So what was actually in the bag? It was a rope, oh. a hatchet, a really old hatchet. Uh, a compass, knife, a knife, a knife, compass, and then a book. The a book, book, the, the original book. book. Oh, and yeah. oh, you said the map. The, well, the map, yeah. And oh, so, spyglass. Oh, the spyglass. Spyglass is important. The dollar store spyglass. Yes, because yeah. my, this is one of the funniest scenes in the movie. Yes. Well, before we get to that, we the plan that Louis comes up with is, well, the only way to get out of here is to build a raft. Yes. Okay? <laughs> that's we can't like, that's, walk a, back up that's the, the last hill thing I would think. Yeah. I know a raft. It's a beautiful. That's your best way out. It's a beautiful raft. It is really nice. Great job with it's this not even thing. those like pointed edges. Yeah, I call at this point. I'm like, I'm done. I call bull crap on this whole thing. <laughs> it took We're, you an hour to and chop seven down. minutes. There wasn't even trees around there. Where did they find <laughs> they those logs? Chopped down these perfect yes, tree trunks. Yes, sharpened like, the ends yes. down. They looked like <laughs> freaking Lincoln log style log. And it was job. a small hatchet too. With the tiny yes. hatchet, these clowns. Yes. I'm, that's a leap too far. And yeah. they lashed like, it together no. with their rope. <laughs> right. I'm like, absolutely. One of the ropes, the Grunsky brothers just tossing yeah, it like a salad. He's like, good job. Good try. Well, at least you're trying or whatever. Yeah. He, like, he becomes ropes, the yeah. troop leader. Yeah, he is. Yeah. That's yeah. a good effort. Yeah. <laughs> but then <laughs> the spy glass comes into play because he's like, oh, look out. So while they're trying to get on the raft. It's like a dollar school. This is important. Franklin it's like, is looking. It yeah. is like a dollar quality spy glass. It's a double. So you see like what? It magnifies what? Yeah. 2x, 3x. So literally, <laughs> girl, whatever is Duke, Duke Earl, Earl. It's literally like 10 feet from him. I love the fact that <laughs> they look to it. It's like, oh, he's looking through this thing and then takes it down. And he's literally just like across the room. <laughs> it's like with if we were in a gymnasium. <laughs> if we're in a gymnasium, he's like halfway across right. the gymnasium. <laughs> Duke Earl has got a sniper rifle pointed <laughs> yes. at him. And what happens? But he fires and hits him right in his spyglass. And nothing happens. No. Right. It just falls out of his Oh, it, it hits. It, yeah, it hits. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't. I don't know. Ow. It's so funny. <laughs> That's Dang. the right reaction. I don't know. It's to go, I don't know. It just shoots it. It sparks yeah. and flies out of his hand. I'm just picturing in real life. He's literally like 10 feet away. And he's like standing with a gun. And he's like, <laughs> ah. Man, it's so stupid. Oh, no. They run onto the raft. They take off on the raft. Okay. At high speed. At high speed. No one brought paddles. Why is this important, Clint? Yes. This is important because he's, I assume they're panning left to right at about like yes. just half a walking pace <laughs> or so. And we're standing here with this rifle and we just unload this thing. And then yeah. it cuts back to him and he's got a different gun in his hand altogether. He's not different carrying gun. any extra guns. No. Now they go down the river a ways and all of a sudden John Goodman is under the he water. Yeah. Out of the water. Ahead How, of them. Yeah, How does this them. happen? They're moving so <laughs> slow down the river that he's like, he walks down there, trots down, there's got but a 20 minute head him. start. They don't see him. No, of course uh, not. He's how long has he been under Seriously, the water? Seriously, because he maybe pops there's up. multiple of them. He's just pop. I, I just yeah. imagine every few minutes he pokes his head he up. Didn't, I didn't see a snorkel. And he's like, he wasn't Are they here? snorkeling no, under there. He was, yeah, he was like, right. Right. Are they here yet? No. Okay. And he goes uh, back under. So funny. And he comes up and he can't even like see out of his eye. I am not a gun guy. No. And and it, originally, the, initially, the gun does not fire. But would the gun start to fire? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Eventually. Well, they but got that. There's right. no reason it wouldn't fire. But here's here's the I thought thing. thought when they got wet, they didn't fire. Flintlock. Because Duke cannot hit a thing. He pops up out of the water, which is a hilarious visual in and of it's itself. Good. Okay? That, was, that was all right. The gun doesn't start to fire, and you're like, well, yeah, dude, you've been sitting underwater for 10 minutes holding your breath or however long waiting for them to come along. It finally does go, and because they don't have any water squibs, the only squibs that they had were like on the raft. 
so all of the <laughs> shots hit right in the same place at the back of the ref where none of the guys were. Right. And it just kept going off and <laughs> he off. He doesn't hit them. He doesn't hit not. them. But if no. you look at this scene right here after this, the raft is, what, six or seven logs wide, yes. right? And then it breaks off two of them so yeah. that we can surf down the thing. But the very next scene, the raft is full size again with those guys landing on shore. Oh, it is. It's like legitimately, part. it's like, okay, so now there's like four here and two there. Right. And then it's like all six of them again. Great. Yeah, I, it doesn't make any sense. And I think like, at what, what point heck? does Duke go, you know what, I'm just going to go home. Right, like I mean, <laughs> this is his fifth chance he's had to hit I'm all, all of them wet. with I his belt-fed rifle. I'm tired of chasing these guys. I got a nice warm cabin a few yards right. away. I'm he just can't, well, he, can't hit so them. he hit. He can't hit them, but he perfectly hits the rope to cut to off. Separate. Yes, he does. Does he think they're still FBI at this point too? I think he, he has to. Either that or he's. What just kind a of FBI person. agents are on this raft yeah, trying to like? Seriously. Right, you got a six foot baby in a sc- scout, scout uniform. Outfit. And you're like, these are definitely and a G-men. doctor in, he in doesn't think much of the leopard G-men. pants and black vest, long right. vest, shoulder. They've thing. seen my face. He's firing oh. at them. This is why he can't hit anything because he's just looking at them like, these guys are dressed weird for FBI. <laughs> and he's distracted. That's what it is. <laughs> he's distracted by the skins they chose for this combat yeah. session. But, but then the raft separates. The greatest scene in the <laughs> entire movie. Tim, oh, Tim okay. is stuck. Tim. Uh, I, so they all end up on one side. Tim ends up on two logs, two logs by himself. By yep. himself. And, and as the one set of the logs with all the people on it drift to shore, well, they, they, they start you. yelling at Tim. Don't like, do it, Tim. Don't do it. Like, come to shore. There's a waterfall. Now this waterfall is like not just a waterfall. Three hundred feet. Degree yes, angle this down. is one of the largest waterfalls I've seen in maybe right. ever in North America. Yeah. And seriously. so what do you do, Tim? This is of all the ideas he could have possibly I had in his this. brain. Cowabunga. He goes, "I'm gonna stand up." He's like, "It's the endless wave, <laughs> bitchin'," uh, and vertically surfs. Oh, it wasn't the- awesome scenery there. It was amazing CGI. <laughs> I was so impressed. That was so CGI. Down the waterfall. I think it was real. I was, was real? in complete yeah. disbelief. It was so <laughs> At this amazing. point, Jenna and I are just sitting there like, I can't believe. <laughs> I thought, I thought that like, was real. He's just, no. he's okay. He's okay. He's, the, however they did it, they have him in a room he's standing like, stationary right. on this thing, and they just Actually, added the water in, and he's just down. I don't rocking know. back and yeah. forth. I don't know if you guys have ever like actually watched Gravity Work, <laughs> um, but the no. water that it came off the top of the waterfall was going the same exact speed as he was when it left the waterfall. So you can't surf a waterfall? So you would think that you would fall at the same rate as the water, but the water's going past him like way he, fast. <laughs> you know? And he's it's just like... Air, it's the drag, drag on the logs. The They're drag. slowing him down and he's so good at surfing, he's balancing. Right. That's why he's got his hands out. It's yeah. to catch them. Yeah. Gotcha. Catch Create, some more air. To yeah. not be so aerodynamic. He had aerialist. He redeployed. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Are you telling me you can't surf all the way down, standing straight up on a waterfall, and then survive? It's the endless wave. I'm not going to say you can't, because somebody's going to be like, oh, absolutely you can. I've done it. Because we always no, have that can't. one guy. But I don't, I don't <laughs> think can't you do can. <laughs> Bottom, bar, bar none. Bar none. Funniest scene in the entire yeah. We had to rewind. Like, it was bad. Re- this did. actually just happened? Uproarious <laughs> laughter in my house <laughs> as we watched this. And then, of course, another, because every time someone dies, another no-sell. They're sitting up on the shore watching their friend go over this water volley. He's, he's like, dead. well, uh, we should keep going. Yeah, Tim would want that. And they, Tim they would just want that. Walk. Tim would yeah. want this, yeah. And they walk themselves into a swamp. And they're swamp. just like, eh, yeah. whatever. Yeah, whatever. A, you know. Okay. You got to keep going, James. You can't <laughs> let it get you down, man. Well, all right, fine. You got a crazy Cubs gun guy. All the time. Cubs, yeah, yeah. Except he's not dead. He's fine. He goes and makes a collect call. On a rotary collect phone, <laughs> which I was shocked. It was Why rotary. did he put the coin in the coin slot to make a collect call? <laughs> anybody oh, ever use a pay phone? Right. <laughs> Has anybody ever? He uses the no. the the. St. Christopher's. Uh, He's got whatever. a quarter shaped necklace. <laughs> necklace. And he calls the cops that his first, girl gave him. Like, no, throws it in there and everything. makes a phone call to yes. the police, which you don't need right. a coin to call 911 either, by the we way. We don't know um, who the second person he called is yet, but he, call, he makes don't. another call and they cut it before we find out. But call. he pulls the chain back out, puts the coin back in. I'd like to make a collect call. It's like, you don't need the coin for either of those two phone <laughs> yeah. calls. The problem is, and I'm sitting here with my 17 and 19 year old daughter watching this movie, and I thought for a second to myself, should I explain to them why that's not possible? And then I just decided to get on with the rest of I my life. I didn't even see the issue. And I did. <laughs> you're you're you didn't explaining see this I'm and sorry. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm you, lusciously you, sorry. I'm like, Never okay. had to make a collect call in I your life. I was shocked it was rotary. Yeah, that was rotary payphone? Because uh, how 80s. Yeah. They didn't have In 88? Yes, they, they, they did. They pushed buttons. Come there. on. That thing... 
had been out of service since 61, though. Well, you know okay, what I'm saying? They, this is like <laughs> the yeah, old ranger true, station from their yeah, childhood. I guess you're... They were remodeling. I don't get it. It was, it was for remodeling. They were go- that was all they were going to change was oh, put in a push a button rotary? phone. That's yeah. a rotary instead have of you, Have you ever made a collect call? Have you ever used Can a rotary phone? you make collect calls anymore? No. You could. You just... If you're ever in Just Antioch, call somebody. <laughs> yeah. If you're ever in Antioch and you call, want I to a, use I a rotary a phone, phone call on my little watch right here, I can, we can answer sw- a phone call. We can swing by my dad's house and in the garage, uh, right next to all the phone numbers it. to the auto parts stores, is the old phone. It doesn't hooked up to a line anymore because no. he doesn't have a home no. phone line anymore. Yeah. But the rotary phone is still. You know what I hate about rotaries is you'd always want to try to push pull them back so you get to the next number. No, it doesn't you, work. You know, you thought you gotta it was, wait, maybe, no. but you, you gotta wait. I'm like. It's too long. And then the my real? grandma had a party line. This generation the, would never wait long enough to make a phone call. <laughs> the real issue was like uh, the Antioch Ford dealership was like 395, 3900. That's a lot of digits all the way at the <laughs> yeah, end. That's true. You, know, you don't it want was a nightmare. End, you you don't wait. want the zeros on the end. Yeah, no zeros, nope. no nines. Like, have oh ones my and twos. Ones and twos at the end, please. That'd be <laughs> great. Yeah. If your number was 25111. If your number was 2511. So did you buy Chevys because their number is shorter? No, I no, because you'd have needed parts way more often. You'd have been calling it a whole lot more. Did I talk over you? If your number was two five one one, I'd be calling you every day. Like, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's we'll right. talk all the time. Yeah. If your number was two nine zero zero, I'm never, never calling, calling you. you. Parents were one eight eight four. You'd have no friends. You'd have no friends at all. <laughs> Yeah, that's why. I don't. That's maybe why uh, no one ever called you. That's why. So great, man. It was so great when you got push button phones. You're like, this is so beep, awesome. Boop, boop, beep. But yeah, even then, I can only call style. people who had a, a pattern I could remember on the phone. <laughs> if your phone was too random around the box, I couldn't do it. I was like, we we had one buddy. His phone number was Slug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. I never forgot that. Phones don't even still have easy to remember. numbers on or letters on them anymore, do they? Uh, they they do for texting purposes. All right, so. Duke is still hunting them. Now it's nighttime again. They've camouflaged themselves with tree branches sticking out of their pants and things. And that's <laughs> yeah. got to be itchy, but whatever. It, hey, see, it worked, you oh, guys. They, have them on the number they can't see us in our bright clothes. You know, my Seriously. giant red jacket. <laughs> yeah. And Duke is like, I'll kill I'm, I know you're out there. I'm going to kill you. Dur, dur, dur. The way they capture the Duke is they flash back to what the Grunskys did when they were little kids to capture Lewis was to put one of those rope traps down where it scoops you up and hangs you upside down. Yep. And so they put a dollar on the ground in the woods and (laughs) like, this is going to attract him. John Goodman wants that dollar, man. (laughs) I mean, I'm hunting would. people in the woods, but I mean, there's a buck a over here. Hey. 20, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. New stuff. And uh, they scoop him up, and sure enough, it works, and they've got Duke Earl hanging upside down hanging from this rope trap. Down. Like the Wiley Coyote. Kai- I've never seen that work in, wanna, in real life. I want to see the sapling they, they bent over to get the spring action <laughs> on that. <laughs> <laughs> They've got him. There, there needs to be a, uh, a MacGyver style montage or an A team montage Something. of them Seriously, building this montages. thing. It would have been awesome. Something. This could use a montage. But what happens is, even though they've got him dead to rights, the older Grunsky brother wants the reward. Oh, yeah. He, he picks up the gun. Right. They he start to argue them. about yep. who's going to get the money and who gets the award. And while that's happening, we see the squirrel is back. Charles Chewing. must yeah. have pissed you off. I have that in my notes. <laughs> the squirrel helped the bad guy prove they're evil. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot that rope so we can get out because they're evil creatures. Thanks a lot, buddy. Well, he's he chewed it, but he didn't chew it all the way because then this, if you remember earlier, I said the first most impossible thing that happened was later, and that's this. John Goodman does an inverted sit-up to, to, oh, he does, ch- to <laughs> chew through the rest of the cord. Wait, wait, are you saying John Goodman doesn't have good ab muscles? I'm saying I I would probably bet $20 and win that he couldn't do an this inverted sit-up. This was in sit-up. his felt stage. And he still wasn't felt. all that svelte. Svelte. Okay. Dude, you see... He didn't. He wasn't Look, fat. I'm skinny. He had Michigan. overdeveloped his abs from doing too many <laughs> sit-ups for this role. But here's the thing: That's you're right. hanging from a rope below the branch that it's tied to, so you'd have to do an inverted setup and grab get the up rope and high climb. enough pull up to get your mouth to the bite it off. Because he he only finished it off with his own. What mouth. you did not see, James, was the army of squirrels lifting him up. Yeah. <laughs> The oh, evil like an, like squirrels, an ant colony, yes. like hoisting ant colony John Goodman. Squirrels. I'm not trying to disrespect John Goodman. I'm just saying the man couldn't. From a dead, I hang, believe he could do it. From a dead In hang, the movies things are possible, James. From a dead hang, yeah. Look John, John Goodman's Goodman. gonna do a sit up all did. the way up. He did okay. it. I saw it on the movie. They right. don't lie. Pictures don't lie, That's James. Fair. No, not this one. Nope. All right, the tape don't but lie. You know You're what right. I caught in that scene was he says, "I'm gonna cancel you from the Grunsky family." Cancel culture was alive even back then. 1988. He used the word cancel in that way. It's true. Maybe and he started this. Maybe that's where this came from. From the wrong guys? From the wrong guys. That's why society has picked this up. This movie sucks. <laughs> now on a whole nother level. 
So he gets down yep. and he is now free and gets his gets a knife pulled on the grunts. He gets his big gun back and basically has turned the tables. A big knife. And forces all of the guys to get into this like dirty pond, this little dirty pond or whatever. I thought it was quicksand at first. So did I. They're <laughs> all like the up to their chest. It's just a dirty pond. He's got the gun on them. They're all up to their chest in water and he's like, all right, I'm going to kill you all now. And right as he's about to shoot them, okay. Richard Lewis yells, Mom! Like, you think he's yelling for his mother. Right. But it's literally his mother. His mom's come. And smacks all him the with moms. the purse. Yeah. All the yes. moms are there. All the moms are there because Tim called all the moms. So these what? guys moved to all different areas of the country. And yes, we're they have left to, to assume. Flight. We yes. are left to assume well, that this entire neighborhood full of dead houses, <laughs> there were other... The other moms were still living there within driving range. <laughs> they just relocated in town. They drove hours away to go to Mount Whitehead for this thing. It wasn't next door. They had no. to stop and refuel. They did. <laughs> <laughs> Probably multiple times. And and the moms get there and beat this trained, not trained, malicious yes. killer to to unconscious. It's the power of love. They uh, unconscious. Oh, they beat the him. Kind of love. I don't know why I can't talk. They beat this guy unconscious with their purses. I, knew. I was thinking the whole time about uh, what is that? Uh, love their kids. Uh, the cartoon with <laughs> the lion right here. or with the. Uh, that's the message. That's the message. Madagascar. Madagascar. The, the, the grandma for Madagascar, oh, the, the old lady with the purse. Bad kitty. That's gonna, all I was I'm thinking. I'm going to show this, in, and I'm going to be a teacher just to show this in class and be like, what theme? <laughs> What's the theme yes. of it? Here, Moms it's love their kids. Moms love their kids. <laughs> it's stupid for two reasons. One is all the logistical problems you pointed out, the fact that how would all the moms get there that quickly? <laughs> well, Even Uber. if they lived locally, they still have to drive to Mount Whitehead and get there. And then finally, they took them days from their camp, which was close to where you park on Mount Whitehead, to just kind of like stumble yeah, down there. Right. And so you've got all that. Now, the other reason it's dumb is that this was the way they want. They were going to end the movie. Is that they called their mothers? Yes. Wasn't there? Didn't the mother save them in the first part of the movie? Did she? I don't remember. My wife that. said, but I tuned out. So. I don't think she did. And she was there, but I don't think she did anything to save them. Okay. So I missed that part. And so. <laughs> Like, I just uh, after all it, that, you're, and, but they talked about how the mom saved them back when they were little kids when yeah. they were lost in the mountain. Yeah, and so they, they, came they back called and the saved moms them again. again. It's like from you're a vicious never killer. too old to be loved by your mom and <sighs> saved by her. All right, so Louis is reunited with his lover. Uh, I mean, mother. Oh, um, mm. and <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> now that's a different, very they different. They literally movie. kiss when they. She's like mom, and then they kiss, and then they don't just kiss, Grace. Oh, I forgot. They Dalai Lama. He's like. Louis made the makeout <laughs> face right as he's going in to kiss his mother. I, like, uh, we went, we rewinded a couple times. He went full on like that's a little weird. like yeah. you do when you're gonna yeah. make out with somebody. Well, maybe that was his girlfriend in real life or something. That was playing his mom. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, let me let me cast Here's the you problem. to play. I think that was his girlfriend in real life. <laughs> yeah, I think that's. But I think that was the point. Like, of Louis the comes oh, in and pulls off his oh, glasses. Oh. <laughs> that's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> that was so weird. I missed that part. I think I was ready. We were looking down at your phone. You go back and watch. He Uh, made the face. Going back and watch. (laughs) (laughs) That's never going to happen. Sorry. All right, and then to confirm that there's really truly no arc to this movie because no one changes, no one learns anything. Nothing happens. They give Louis the all the money. No, the redemption story. What? What redemption story? Their mothers oh, no. came and no, saved them. No, no, they got to be in they the freaking Cub be, Scouts. They got the regret. Yeah, the two you, brothers got we to were, be in the Cub Scouts. We were focusing on the wrong people, and, and they got their then arrows. And they got their awards. For they got that their golden arrows. Guy. That's it. But they didn't do anything to deserve yep. them. Their mothers came and saved the day. That's what I'm I saying. I mean, they tracked him down and got they held him. Called. So they that didn't track him down. Duke Earl tracked them down. They caught him. They caught him. No, they didn't. they didn't even catch him. The mother. It's the squirrels' did. fault. I blame the squirrels. <laughs> if the squirrels hadn't helped him, they happened. would have been heroes. It's a travesty. The mothers should have been on that stage getting arrows pinned on their chests. I like yeah. how Tim had shorts instead of pants on. Yeah. <laughs> what was up with that? For the he's ceremony. just special. Yeah, he's a surfer guy from California. They walk yeah. in. It's like the end of Star Wars: A New Hope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they come in to get the medal ceremony, and they got all Princess the Cub Leia Scouts are looking at him like they're heroes. Like the nine-year-olds. Ooh. They got a ton of nine-year-olds to be in this scene. Hold on. Oh, like all the kids before from this, the town. who swoops in right after the moms clean up this whole mess? 
FBI Squad 7. Oh, can seven. we talk about With, Squad 7 yes. for a sec? Because yes. this guy <laughs> Whatever there. was so excited to do this part. Uh, he was. He was. <laughs> this, this was his was breakout very, role. This was. guy was excited. He was the only paid actor in this <laughs> thing. The rest of these guys were doing this on a favor to Louis. Like, Louis, had, Louis had incriminating pictures on everybody <laughs> In this film, the <laughs> casting director, the guy who did uh, the directing itself, the actual, yes. the videographer, everybody right. was here under duress except for this guy. Oh, hey, you guys, I get to be in a movie. Uh, yeah. He's all in on this. <laughs> Hell yeah. The FBI guy rolls in. He's doing this whole thing where he's like, oh, with the FBI, and he's holding his gun up like all dramatically. Which of you, what are you guys, you mercenaries? What do you, you know, like, no, we're Cub Scouts. Yeah. He does his whole speech, yeah. Yeah, he does a whole speech. Yeah. It's, he, he's, God bless him, so into this part. Yeah. You could tell, I don't know, even without looking at the guy's filmography, it seemed like it might have been his first movie ever. He was so pumped to be this FBI agent. I looked agent. this guy up. I was so impressed. Had he done stuff before this? I find him again. All right. While you're doing that, we'll, we'll talk about the Cub Scout ending. So they go to the ceremony, like I said. They're getting their – now they're back getting their medals pinned on their chests. And there's this old guy who's, I don't know, the czar of the Cub Scouts or the Lord Lord Cub Scout, whatever his <laughs> yeah, name is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the Grand Wizard John of the Calvin. Cub Scouts. John Calvin? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. He was in uh, – what was he in? Nothing. Nothing. The wrong guys. His last movie was The Point Man in 1995. Oh, right, it's not too much longer after this. George went in the heat of the night, a bunch of, bunch of regular TV okay. shows. So, yeah, he didn't have much of a career. Nope. So – Here's what I want to point out to King Lord of the Cub Scouts, whatever that old guy's. I don't know what the hierarchy of Cub Scouts is. What's the main Cub Scout's name? Cubby or Scouts. The Cubby or <laughs> Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Eagle Scouts. It keeps going. Right, but what's his title? Like, is this Grand is Poobah. The, we'll just go. Yeah, just the Grand Commandant of Oh, like, actually, I think Cub that's Scouts. listed here. Scoutmaster. Su- Scoutmaster. Supreme okay. Commander. Jimmy Supreme Weldon. Commander. Do you want to know who he was? I thought he was the best actor in the movie. But he was... so. That's yeah. the whole reason I brought him up is I'm like, we got to put some respect on this guy's name. Yeah. He had the hardest job. He had to go all the way down the line in one shot and pin a pin. And he on made like actual their, comments that were like realistic. Made comments, kept the scene going, didn't flub his lines, pinned one on everybody's shirt all in the same take. I'm like, that dude he had was, the hardest job in the whole He was movie. the former host of the Webster Webfoot Show at KJEO 47 in Fresno, California during the 1960s. Yeah, well. Webster Webfoot was squat duck. Grinding. Really, or what town was it in? Uh, Fresno, California. So grinding all those years yeah. in Fresno prepared this man to do eight pins sequentially in one take without messing it up. Oh, this is why they got him, because his, ventrilo- his ventriloquist dummy was a Weebolo Cub Scout. He was a ventriloquist. I, I think so. Too I bad he couldn't have been to Cub me. Scout. Why, why didn't they have him voice Louis Anderson for the whole movie? <laughs> Just stick his so we didn't have to hear him talk like scene. this, guys. Now, I love that scene where he goes down and he says all that stuff. And yeah, well, and, so, and it was, it was impressive. Very natural and very, as somebody like, that's yes. you know made movies, I'm like, oh my gosh, they made him do this in one take. He had to put a pin on each that was person. Impressive. That's and make legit comments. That's crazy on whoever the Danny Bilson dude. Don't do that to your actors. Well, that, that man was clearly up for it. We all, I'm, we'll I'm proud of again. him. That's what we'll I'm saying. He was a radio DJ. He can handle this stuff. Yeah. All right, this movie's over. Good job. Yay. Oh, right, we got to give Sorry. some awards. I was too excited for that. You guys are ready to give out some awards to the wrong guys? Let's do it. Some of these are the right guys, the right guys for these awards. And we're going <laughs> to <laughs> we're gonna start, as we always do, with the most coveted award we give out. It's the Will Patton Award for Intensity. You want an award? I'll give you a award! I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night. If they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take every last there one of you out. You make sure they remember forever the night they played the Titans. It's so intense. <laughs> he's just looking at me. I'm scared. Actually, he's looking at Grace. That's a little freaky, actually. <laughs> he is looking. Yeah. He's, oh, my God. He is looking right at you. Will Patton's, head, intense, <laughs> Will Patton's head on the wall here in the studio just staring <laughs> us down. Just anytime we feel like we don't have the energy for an episode or we're kind of coming in coasting. And I get that's right. Energy. That's why he's there. Yeah. He's like, don't be slacking. They're just giving you that look. Yep. All right. We start off with the Will Patton Award for Intensity, which is the award we give out to the actor that, even though they were in The Wrong Guys, 1988, they still brought the intensity of intensity. Will Patton into the role. Burning so, passion for acting. That's right. What is your Who's your nomination, Charles, for your Will Patton Award? 
My nomination for Will Patton yes. in The Wrong Guys, not to be confused with the other guys, <laughs> is Duke <laughs> Earl's actor John Goodman. All right, all right, nice, nice. Clint? I was uh, really, really hard on John Goodman here, too. I think that he deserves that mm -hmm. award, but there were a couple of scenes where he was maybe not as... Uh, on fire, so I'm gonna go with the FBI guy at the end. He was like, <laughs> for his one section of he one role of one ever, he was in. He convinced not... me he was a Section Seven <laughs> FBI agent. He was like leftover Cub Scout Section Seven, Thanks. gonna make an FBI group. Yes, that's yeah. not a wrong answer at all. Not at all. Grace, who's your nomination? <sighs> okay. Um, after much consideration, mm, I'm sure <laughs> much. Yeah. Thinking all night about this. I've been thinking about um, this all weekend. Yeah, I've been thinking all about day. this because I did. I totally didn't pick one ahead of time, and I'm like scrambling here. I'm not stalling. <laughs> not doing that. It's definitely the squirrel that attacked. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Good the squirrel pick. that attacked the, the squirrel. The, the dead taxidermied squirrel was the most <laughs> yeah. intense thing. You talk about when he jumped on the guy's the head movie. and he, ratat he ratatouille him. He yes. had the hair yeah. in his hands and everything. That yeah. It's great, great stuff. I hate squirrels. <laughs> I, I love like, squirrels. I, I went with John Goodman also, I was Charles. Say, I, so, I feel yeah. bad because I, I picked mine because I really thought John Goodman was going to clear oh, around no, the table. I, we're, I think John Goodman's <laughs> in good shape here because All right. the patrons playing along with us today, we have two people right in. First one is Mike Harding, and he actually went with Ernie Hudson as his award winner. Ernie which Hudson. Ernie Hudson wow. wasn't bad in this movie. They just no. didn't give him a lot to do. No. Right. And so I always thought he looked just as tough, if not tougher, than John Goodman. I'm like, why doesn't he just take over yeah, this Yeah, why outfit? does John Goodman keep beating him up? Yeah, right. doesn't make any sense. Well, Arnie Hudson's a thick guy. He's a big dude. And when you sit in there next to John Goodman, you see he yeah, doesn't look small. There's no way Dan Connor beats up Ernie. Uh, no, Ernie Hudson. Although, did you see John Goodman from? in Winston. Yeah. Winston. Yeah. There's no way Dan <laughs> Connor beats movie? up Winston. No way. No way. What movie? Uh, I don't know. I can't remember. So uh, we also have Dave, don't call me Paul Parkinson, right in all the way from Australia. And he's going to seal the deal here because he also went John Goodman. There you so go. So John Goodman with three votes out of six yeah. is going to take home the Will Patton Award for intensity. Well deserved. If this I was a feel, scrollless movie, I would have voted him too. I yeah. feel like <laughs> in a disproportionate amount of time, it goes to the villain. Yeah, a lot of times think, it does. I think that the villain gets so much more to play with. That it takes yes. a lot oh, yeah. for a protagonist to Which they become have. I have super to go back intense. And, it has happened for sure, but the villain generally gets the nod for just nothing. If they do. I mean, in, the, in this case, he genuinely seemed unhinged. Right. And, and John Goodman's a well good deserved. villain. I think he was the only actor. Cloverfield 10. He, well, not the only actor. In a, he was definitely actor. Cloverfield Lane. That was good, yeah. Barton oh. Fink. Barton Fink. When he's running through the hall. Big Lebowski. I mean, fire. Yes. Come on. When, he's, bad guy when he shoots movie. up the car, but the he's entire a crazy time. person in that movie. But the entire time that he played Dan Connor, he made us think that he loved Roseanne Barr. So and that <laughs> is acting. Has to be the most yes. uh, proficient <laughs> well, actor in the group. I think you can, we can just say John Goodman, great performance in a... In a in Unfortunately. Awesome unfortunate movie. movie. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. All right, so now we're going to move on to the, the award you don't want to win, the award we give out to whoever was the worst actor in the movie, the one that had the acting range of a trash, trash can, can filled with dirt. It's the Michael Dudikoff <laughs> Trash Can Full of Dirt Lots Award. Of dirt. That's Louis right. Louis Anderson. And it uh, looks like we've already got our first vote from Clinton Bush with Louis Anderson. Louis Clean Anderson. Sweet. Oh, come on, guys. You're going to nominate me for the trash can? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have to nominate you. You've won it. We're just going to present have, it to I you. I beg to differ. Oh, all right. Here we go. Richard Lewis. Even Bro. he was tired of his own stick in this movie. Yeah. What he am was I? Was so, I acting in this movie? I don't he know, was they're so vote. done with this movie. They're movies. definitely going to vote me for the trash can, but then if I <laughs> didn't Hitler, do it. Hitler would do that. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> All right, he who's was here? so over this. Oh, he was, yeah. So you hated him in this movie. I'm I not surprised. Him he movie. hates him in general. I don't like him in general, but he was like, you could tell he's like, I just got to do my thing. He just did a stand up routine. It was dumb. That was it. Anyway. Who you got, Grace? Louis Anderson. Louis Anderson yeah. with the second vote. Yeah. Come on, Grace. Louis Anderson was good. Oh, I hate you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I didn't also go with Louis Anderson because oh. I definitely went with Louis Respect. Anderson. Respect. I mean, from, yeah. you know, we're talking about you. He got his movie but, made. Yeah. You, yeah, sure. Yeah. It's, well, yeah. It's, I think he was hired. I don't think this was his movie. Well, but, I, no, I he has <laughs> He has incriminating or had. These guys had. are free now. Yeah. You guys are finally free. <laughs> you can tell us what actually happened, why you were yeah. persuaded to make this Danny or Bilson. be in this movie. Let us know. 
Like, I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but I'm speaking ill of the dead. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Harding wrote in, and he actually went with a tie between uh, Brian James and Biff Maynard, the Grunsky brothers. He gave the trash oh, can. Oh, come on. Those guys were good. Them. Oh, no. I like those guys. I like Brian James, but his the older brother was terrible. He was yeah, they weren't terrible. Great. They were not great. This is not a, there's not a wrong answer in the movie, maybe outside of John Goodman. <laughs> there's a lot of options and for Ernie trash Hudson. in this movie. <laughs> there's yeah. a lot, the, the, Spoiled for choice. I'm, I'm not going to die on two. any of these trash can hills today. The third member of the gang besides Ernie Hudson and John Goodman could have easily won this award. <laughs> yeah, what did that guy yeah. do? so terrible. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. My arm, it hurts really bad. Well, he had enough <laughs> really to do oh. to be, oh. and still while being we gotta terrible. We got to stop him. He's going to go, he's going crazy. <laughs> you know, when you're in more than four scenes. <laughs> I don't think that's how you actually And you're terrible in all four of them or more. It, yeah, it's hard to not be on they the They just list. left him out of the movie. We never even found out if he got out of bed. They're just like, we're just moving on. Yeah, that's character. true. What happened to that guy? doesn't matter. They're just he like, died of like, sepsis in there. <laughs> he's like, oh. He, he just is. woke up one morning. He's like, where the hell is it? Oh, everybody? we do know. The cops he, said they got him both. Oh, he got true. free. <laughs> but it's and like we, how the movie just ditched him. They're like, we're yeah, done with this character. Done. We're done with that. <laughs> We're done. We're done. All right. So Dave, don't call him. Paul Parkinson wrote in, and he actually wants to change the award, uh, as Bob had suggested before, to the Jake Lloyd Award, because he went with every kid in the opening scene (laughs) as his trash can full of dirt award winner. So Uh, that's uh, that's not also also not wrong, I should say. Uh, Good call across the board, but with three votes... Louis Anderson Louis is going to take it. Up. Hey, I won an award, you guys! First oh, no. time ever. Congratulations. <laughs> no, he won the Cub Scout pin. He oh, did. He did. Yeah, He's no, happy. he didn't, Not though. Discount. He He's didn't win dying that. a happy what? man. He got his golden air or blue. He won all that or... money. <laughs> <laughs> he did and get all you know money. what he spent it on? His mama. He's <laughs> paid <laughs> off her sugar mortgage, mama. finally. His sugar mama. His sugar mama. mama. <laughs> oh, what if he just called her mommy? What if that wasn't his real mom the whole time? The whole time. When he, he just, was a kid, she was a pedophile. That's, oh. it wasn't a, wasn't a real mom back then either. Oh. His, what is wrong with you, James? How could you even bring something like that in here? Or something like that, or sister-in-law, or something. What is that? All right. Oh, is, Let's go to our top three. This show always gets weirdly dark. It does once in a while. It's um, probably me. The top three we performances. Baby Huey, that got kind of weird. Is a, a subjective ranking. So again, you guys aren't gonna like me. Not because of how good or bad they were, but just <laughs> so no change. Who you enjoyed the <laughs> yeah. most? Exactly. Even it could be you enjoyed them because they were terrible. It's again subjective. So Charles, who were the three performances right. that you enjoyed the most? I'm gonna say this. Okay. The John Goodman. Okay. Number three. Number three. Yeah. There are two people you enjoyed more than yeah, John. Oh, true. I love this. All right, let's go. <laughs> Brian James is Glenn <laughs> Grunsky. I really like Brian James in this. I thought he was very charismatic. Was it when he went to sleep and reversed the car yes, by hanging his yes, hand? That was awesome. The, that was, I mean, everything shifter. he did was perfect. It was spot on. Yeah, okay. I liked him. And my number one yeah. is Louis Anderson. No! <laughs> <laughs> Because Louis Anderson was, he was the heart and soul of this movie. Shut your mouth. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It was all about Louis. He was so excited to get his buddies together. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Plug it back in. <laughs> we shut him up. We shut him up. You. He silenced me. He was so excited to be in the, his friends coming back. And he got, he was, I loved Louis. Oh my gosh. He's my number one. That's the first time we've had somebody unplug someone's microphone <laughs> yeah. because of a take was, that they had. It was had. probably deserved, so actually. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoyed his performance I was, or like in an ironic way? No, I, I, it was okay. Okay. What? But your favorite I have, one. I'll explain that when we get to All right. the final All right, verdict that's fine. on that's the show. Fine. I'm interested to I hear your I have a reason take. why. Clint, who's your top three, and does it include Louis Anderson? No. Um, I, <laughs> Good. Legitimately, my number three, and I don't really know why, but our surfer dude. I Tim don't was know. fun. Tim, Tim, I, was I good. dig that guy. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I like him in a bunch of stuff, smaller parts, but like you yeah. know, he's Doug Masters' dad. I mean, he this is. is what he was doing yeah. when he was supposed to be off in fighter <laughs> school or something. But like, legitimately, I I didn't mind his uh, run in this. John Goodman's gonna go number two and flow from progressive. Thank you, <laughs> number one, for number one. Thank. Thank you for being on Tubi with commercials, because otherwise <laughs> we didn't see Flo once. Tubi must think you need car insurance. Seriously, really? Uh, yeah. No, I did not what see what commercial Flo. did you? Got? I don't this remember. Is, but. Actually, this would be worth watching. As, as we have to watch this stuff, I'm just yeah. curious because I saw Flo probably every ad break at least once, twice oh. in some of them. So no. it's like they. Oh, we had a lot of car commercials. Yeah, but not not, not uh, like car insurance. No, what does it mean insurance. when I get a lot of like? AIDS treatment. It means that <laughs> I have, I know, there are a few of those. Like, they're spying on your phone. Erectile. 
erectile dysfunction. Right. What are, and, we should play a game called What Are Louis Anderson's uh, Commercials? All right, so Grace, <laughs> what's your top three performances? Um, okay, so number three, mm-hmm. um, I had what? Okay, Franklin. Franklin. Okay. I like yeah. Franklin because he was in. Franklin was good. He, yeah. he had no. He wasn't full of drama he was causing problems Mm-mm. and he's a professional shot dodger so yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> just like, I like that um, blocking snipers yeah. with, so with two, his spy glasses two yeah. I had John Goodman okay. and yeah. then uh, number one it was uh, the surfer guy Tim, Tim Thomerson yes because he just chases waterfalls he like, does, he don't go chasing the waterfalls yeah. Yeah. he's just like <laughs> it was the only time I thought like the only part of the movie <laughs> I thought was funny so yeah. Yeah. the, the other like, part <laughs> that was good is like legitimately was like nah I can't go cheat on my girl dude you know it's like yeah. he was, oh, she was right. like no he we was, can't do this right. she can he read my brain she can read my brain yeah he was faithful yeah I like faithful guys well my top three I actually went with Richard Lewis number three. Oh my gosh because I'm a fan of his it didn't work at all in this movie but because his joke about is it small the engine was the only thing that made me laugh <laughs> that's because you don't know anything about engines i mean it's like movie. oh somebody else who sucks at this <laughs> like this is me i could do this i wouldn't know if it's in there either <laughs> i would have known if the engine was missing <laughs> you think so. okay uh number two i had tim <laughs> Tom- tim thomerson number two again just charismatic guy yeah, yeah. like, yeah. Tim Tom- like yeah. him and then john goodman number one sure, sure. so fair. uh mike harding wrote in and said that he, he actually gave the only person to put this guy in his top three Richard Richard Belzer at number three. He had Franklin at number two and John Goodman at number one. So completely reasonable. Those are reasonable. Belzer, I didn't like in this movie, but I if you're a fan of his and his shtick, I think that makes sense to me. I just ever since he sued Hulk Hogan in the eighties, I've like had a thing against the guy. Hulk Hogan came out. He used to have a late night talk show. Belzer did, oh. and he was Hogan. trying to expose the business, right, and be like, <laughs> and called it fake. And oh. Hogan, and back, back back then, now they're a little more open oh, about oh, it. Being oh, WWE, WWE, yeah, yeah. Okay. they're WWF. a little more open about it being scripted now, you know. But like in the back then, they were trying to protect the business. Mm-hmm. And so he's on his talk show, and he's like, well, this is all fake, right? And so Hogan's like, I'll show you if it's fake. I'm going to put you in a hole. Oh, I do regularly remember right? this now. And yes. he's like, yeah, go ahead. So he puts him in like an underhanded chokehold and it, and literally knocks him out and lets him go, and he hits the floor and like busted his head, got a concussion or whatever, and sued Hogan. I'd sue Hogan for that, too. And uh, I wouldn't. If you're on the show <laughs> and he says, if you want me to show you it's fake, and you say, sure, well, I'm he sorry you agreed. Consent. I think it's implied yeah. in there not to the point of passing no, out and breaking you consented. <laughs> it's like, I will Look, show you it's real here. It's Hogan real. Hogan don't know his own strength. In the yeah. 80s, whatever, you're just on Hogan's side, okay? Like, I don't, maybe I as an adult, you're like, yeah, that seems legitimate. But at the time, I'm like, I do vaguely you remember know, this. Yeah. Boo, Hogan's the man, so. Yeah. That's back when it was the World Wildlife Fund. Right? Yeah, it was the World Wildlife <laughs> Federation. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dave, don't call him Paul Parkinson, gave a tie on number three with Tim Thomerson and Franklin. He said he couldn't separate the two. That's fair. They both share number three. Ernie Hudson gets number two for him and John Goodman. So his top two spots by two of the bad guys. Yeah, I was almost cheering for the bad guys in this movie. Right. So, so Dave, I'm the only one that had Louis on number one? You're the only one you're that had, only one had Louis at all. at all. Are you surprised? Yeah. Which we'll see. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, guys. Come if on, I, if, yeah. I could, if I could do it, Anything. The first thing I would do is get rid of Louis Anderson. The first thing. And I would put Arnold Schwarzenegger right in that spot. Yes. yes. Tell me him running around in the short shorts and the socks pulled up in his little scout uniform. Hey, mother, come here and get a kiss. Oh, my guys, look, there's stuff in this back. There's a rope in here, and there's a book, and there's all kinds of things in my uniform. Is <laughs> look, in fizzies. In, no. like, He'd have fizzies. to be one of the Grunsky brothers. No, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> he could be the squirrel. <laughs> Louis with the little hat and everything, and he's still living at home with Arnold at home with his mother and like has it moved on with his life he's just busting out of his <laughs> could you uniform? imagine if he was john goodman's character yeah, because he, he wouldn't john miss a freaking shot the movie would be, be over, over. <laughs> boom 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 done right he'd take one of them out there'd be blood like in splattered. the pancake house <laughs> if it in bleeds the, yeah. we can kill yeah them. in the fr- if it bleeds uh, we can kill it <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I mean I, that would I be will great. make a challenge that I'm not sure Arnold could make this movie better. Die 100%. in a fire. You don't tell me if he's in his little Cub Scout uniform going around acting like a child that that wouldn't I have been like hilarious. I feel like he John Goodman's part if you're going to put him in a movie. You, no, but the like movie would be his, over. Like twins Boom, or done. kindergarten cop would be like one of those comedies that what he would What if he was a guy that got shot and he just did like four scenes? Really? He, was just, <laughs> <laughs> oh he was the pancake guy. <laughs> if somebody shot Arnold in the bicep, it would just ping off of it, okay? <laughs> that wouldn't have been or realistic. The, or the FBI agent at the end. At the very end. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'd be awesome. 
<laughs> Look, both so both Mike and Dave both agreed that Arnold should have replaced Louis. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. No. So I think yeah, I think Ernest should have replaced Louis. Anderson. That's <laughs> absolutely sure. That's that would have been hilarious. That would have been true. way better. Way better. It's See, interesting that camp. you say that. He's every time the, he already has camp time. skills, right? He already did it. Your gr- appreciation is growing now. Stop now that it. you've watched a Louis Anderson movie, Ernest ain't looking too bad. All of a sudden, is he? He's <laughs> looking less bad. <laughs> I'm not yeah. saying good. Well, that's bad. Are we done with the that's awards? Up. We're done with, with the. Well, okay, we got to get to the final ratings. Okay, yeah. so he, I'm going to start my final rating. Okay, go it for ties it. exactly yeah, what so you we'll, just said about it. For those of you that have never listened to this, we give a final rating on a three scale system. Yes. We either say this is a good movie with no qualifiers, it shouldn't be rated badly at all, or we say it's a bad movie, full stop, or if it's a bad movie that we enjoyed, it's a bad movie that rules, aka the name of our show. So, okay. go ahead. So, it, this ties into Ernest. I'm watching this movie, and I would say I'm about. 40 minutes in, okay. and I think to myself, I said, you know, why do I not enjoy this movie as much as I enjoy Ernest movies? Because they have a very similar feel. A little. A very similar sort of kookiness and, and, and an attempt to be sort of the Louis character is supposed to be sort of There's no physical comedy in this stuff. And yeah. all that kind of thing, right? Mm. He's innocent. He yeah. just wants to relive his he wants to get Ernest right. never kissed his mom. Totally see yeah. Ernest in that role. Oh, sure, absolutely. I don't right? disagree. So I thought to myself, well, if that's the case, it has it has very similar schlockiness as Ernest movies do. But this does seem more stupid or ridiculous than those movies. Not as fun. No. But then I thought to myself, if I put it in that genre of Ernest type movie, if I'm a I'm a kid watching this, or I'm just Although I don't know who this movie is made for. Well, it must have been made for kids, though. Maybe it was made not. for Louis freaking Anderson. Yeah. With all those Hitler jokes and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah that's a good point. So, <laughs> trying to, and trying to hook up with the, the girls. girls in the shower, yeah. I might have to change my yeah. vote. No, 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 go ahead. I get what you're so saying. So this go is ahead. what I'm thinking. I'm looking at yeah. this going, I'm judging this movie, and I'm, I said to myself at the end, I said, this is, this is a bad movie. Obviously. But I am going to go with it barely rules. Okay. It barely rules. All right. like, that's your opinion. It's, that's it's your opinion. wrong. I think it's in the okay. <laughs> but it's your opinion. My yeah. wife says it's a bad movie that's meh. <laughs> 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 like I could see myself see well, maybe stopping if I'm in a yeah. hotel and this movie's on. Sure. Pausing there while I eat some Cheetos before I go to sleep. You know? Right. Flaming hot Cheetos. Yeah. <laughs> Of course. For sure. So I, I, I don't. I so, but I have to put it in that frame of mind of the sort of stupid, silly, earnesty yeah. world. So you're you're grading it on a curve. Yes. Yeah. But I understand. Well, we have but I understand. A hundred and five episodes in, we have to grade it on a curve. We don't have a choice. We're doing it in unintentionally <laughs> because legitimately, some of these movies run across us a hundred episodes ago, and they're just trash. Right. But now we have watched some real <laughs> steaming piles. We've watched some good stuff too that's surprising. We have. And yeah. like legitimately you you have to curve it. It it happens. Your your sure. entire life experience yes. changes your opinion. And that's sure. the whole point of this. This is a bad movie. Okay. That is bad. Now, right. <laughs> that being said, on a scale of bad movies that get to rule or are at least entertaining and stuff like that, my scale, my thing is like, would I watch this by myself? No. Would I watch this with other people? Potentially, but there's so much better stuff that's still bad to watch yeah. with other people around. Right. This like, is, you're not going to, like Charles says, he's going to yeah. go and watch this in a hotel room eating Cheetos before he goes to bed. <laughs> no, Cinemax is on. You're an idiot. Um, but idiot like, Cinemax. legitimate, you cannot. I wouldn't watch this okay. alone. I got you. Never. So bad movie that's bad. Bad movie that's bad. All right. I respect that. Grace? I'm also going to say bad movie that's bad. Um, okay. By the time we got to like an hour into it, I just like, I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. I lost focus. My notes got, <laughs> I just, yeah. got really rough. I Yeah. I and that like, was the good I part? Really you were just shot by the time the halfway it. decent stuff yeah. happened? I understand. So just full on bad movie. Yeah. It was just bad. All right. So... I so I actually have a similar opinion to yours, but I'm I, I kind of got to go the other way with it because for the first hour it's a ninety minute movie. Thank God it was yes. a ninety minute yes. movie. Okay, imagine we bring two back hours. a ninety minute movie. That'd be great on a regular basis. Yeah. For the Seriously. first hour, there was no redeeming qualities. In fact, I I, I was kind of where you were at Clinton, like. There's almost not even enough meat on the bone to have a conversation about it, right? We had way more talking about it entertainment here than yeah. exists in the movie. Like <laughs> For sure. If you haven't seen this and you're listening to us and you're on the fence about it, don't watch the movie. It's free on Tubi. There's you more stuff watch. to do. Tubi. We <laughs> gave you all the information. We did. You we don't did, need actually. to watch it. So, uh, But uh, in an hour in, I was going to say bad movie that's 
a steaming pile. Yes. But the last 30 minutes are so bonkers. They are pretty crazy. And so hilarious yes. that I'm going bad movie that rules. All right. Because, because that's prime. Like that last 30 minutes was prime BMR material right there. Prime. I agree. I would watch. Yes. I don't think I, if we were going to get together, I agree by myself, never again. But if we were going to get together and watch it, I would turn on the last half an hour. Now I'm curious whether Grace likes Ernest movies. I oh, do. Yeah. I you love. You do like I Ernest movies? Ernest okay, so stupid, that that yeah. blows my theory out of the water. Yeah, er, Ernest is. But I grew up on that. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to say. If I grew up on this, I'd be more messed up than I am. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I'd be. <laughs> I, I don't even want to say Ernest and Louis in the same sentence. No, it's not. Honest. It's like I feel like it's insulting to Ernest P. World. It is a little bit. <laughs> but it's just similar world movie. building. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what Mike Harding had to say. He goes, the tagline for this movie is what Stripes did to the army. First of all, how dare you? Yeah, yeah. it's pretty uh, insulting. You don't even get to say Stripes <laughs> anywhere then, near this pile. Yeah, this isn't anywhere close to that. You think that's bad? The next line of the tagline is what police academy did to law enforcement, no. which is almost even worse. These guys do to scouting. What? Scouting was scouts. already trapped. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, because I've to seen all those of our <laughs> Scout fans, I apologize for my <laughs> previous true. statement. Are you a Boy Scout? So Mike goes, I've seen those movies, and sir, this movie is no Stripes or Police Academy. <laughs> this is a lazy movie that didn't even bother to think up names for the main characters. Yes. It has that is a valid point. One of the worst <laughs> conflict resolutions ever. There was they a resolution? their mothers in all caps. Oh, uh, that was funny. <laughs> The moms come in. For help stopping a dangerous, heavily armed, escaped convict, the only funny scene in the entire movie, the pancake diner, didn't even have the comedians in it. Right. This is a bad movie, full stop, Mike Harding says. Right. I'm with you, Mike. That's fair. Thank you right. for tipping the scales. I'm not going to blame I, anyone for saying this. I don't movie. disagree with him no. at all. I'm, this is, it's a very personal yes, thing. Yes, yes. Uh, David Parkinson said, Dear God, what did you make me watch? <laughs> I called James and said, I have never hated you more than right now. Again, it's not my fault. It's your fault. It's a random pull from the list. You put it on the list. You didn't vet Just the list. Just tell Dave not to watch Baby Huey or he might really have right. major issues. Because I, I pity, didn't. Yeah. Because I pity any of those that have to watch this bad movie, <laughs> full stop, so cheesy and corny, would never watch it again. No, I love terrible. Cheese. Garbage pale kids level trash. I don't know if it's that a bad. Strong take from That's Dave a Strong Martin. take. I'm, I'm with him. I think he's not that far off. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, brother. No, I would sit down. Like if if we have to take the worst ones ever, Garbage Pail Kids, this Masters of the Universe, we yeah. put them together, I, and we sit down and we watch. We're watching Masters of the Universe. I mean, <laughs> um, like right. Garbage Pail Kids and this are way way below that. Well, that's what I'm saying. If yeah. we were going to get together to watch something, it'd be anything. Cool as ice, yeah, or Jim anything. Or but the, well, Cool Mr. as Ice is the bitchinest movie on Mr. the wall. I Mr. love Mr. that <laughs> movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, girl. Um, all right, so let's talk real quick. Next yep, week, yep. next Just week, add ice. we've got our Patreon pick. This was the episode <laughs> voted on by our Patreon members. So if you've had a good time and you want to have some influence over some of these episodes and what movie gets picked, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash badmoviesrules. Next week coming up, Napoleon Dynamite. Do the chickens have large talons? Right? And somebody else say, that's not a bad movie. And I go, well, do whatever movie we want to do. Gosh. <laughs> Get your hands off my top. <laughs> Vote for Pedro. All right. So we're going to be doing Shots, Napoleon Dynamite. Bags. Ryan Mueller will be here. He's very excited. And also, for the Lucky. first time in a long time, Brady Cox, all the way from Nebraska, wow. coming in Whoop. to sit in awesome. the studio. We'll be here for Napoleon Dynamite. So join us next week for that. In the meantime, on behalf of... Grace Hauser, the golden one, the Reverend Charles Hewitt, and the dirt farmer Clint Bush. I'm James Hauser. Thank you for listening. Oh my, it's the closing song, you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my mommy saved me. The wrong guy sucks for all I the right you. reasons. <laughs> The more we get together, the happier was we'll be. Was that a be. spoken word version of that? There was a song and a spoken word. Yes, it was very impressive. It got stuck in my head for hours. The more we get together, together, together. The, I don't know the rest of the song. The more we get together, the, the happier, happier we'll be. be.